Andy Sheets. And in the field for the Shockers, in left field will be Tommy Tilma in center field, probably the best to ever play there for the Shockers, Jim Audley. And in right field, Todd Dreifert. Around the infield at third, Mike Jones, senior, member of their championship team two years ago. Chris Wimmer's the shortstop. Billy Hall will play second base. At first base is Jason White. Behind the plate, their RBI leader, Doug Mirabelli. And he'll catch Tyler Green at 6'5", an imposing figure on the mound, a record of 11 and 1, and that anxious to see that knuckle curve, Greg. I know that uh, the LSU Tigers aren't exactly <laughs> anxious to see it, but the Creighton Blue Jays got a real good look at it earlier this week. Yeah, there have been guys that have thrown the knuckle curve, or they call it the spike curve, where they use one knuckle, but this is a very unique pitch. It's actually more knuckleball than curveball, and uh, the results have been outstanding. That's what he did Monday night, 14 strikeouts. As you mentioned, had a uh, uh, first round draft choice of the Philadelphia Phillies number 10 and uh, Tyler was very interesting he says the phone rang and uh, <laughs> his roommate answered it and he was taking a nap and he said it's for you and he said take a message yeah. and the guy said it's real important so he got on the phone and he said you've been drafted by us the Phillies and he said terrific he hung up the phone went back yeah, to sleep he had <laughs> more important things on his mind like this game right here packed house at Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium and we get underway with number one for the LSU Tigers, the number one hitter in the lineup, second baseman Tookie Johnson. Having a good college World Series at 364, hitting 272 on the season. And here's Tyler Green going to work. Whoa. And we're underway. As Leslie mentioned at the beginning, what makes that knuckle curve, and you'll know it when you see it, so tough is the speed with which he throws it because his fastball is 90 miles an hour plus, and he throws this knuckle curve that's almost as quick. LSU head coach Skip Bertman told us yesterday that unfortunately that, that knuckle curve is about six to eight miles an hour faster than the fastball of three or yeah, four of his pitchers. It's a hard downer. 2-0 pitch. Oh. A high ball three. Tookie Johnson has been uh, pretty prominent in LSU baseball. This is the all-time rank number one in games played, in hits, and in runs scored, and number two in RBIs. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tyler Green has fallen behind in the count. 3-0. That's a called strike. Falling behind is something Tyler Green can't afford to do today. Yeah, as much as we talk about the knuckle curve, if he does not have control of that fastball and get ahead of these hitters, then... The knuckle curve's not going to be as useful to him, and LSU, great fastball hitters. Three-one pitch to Johnson. Ball strike two. Five pitches, five fastballs from Tyler Green so far. And a good indication of what we see all the time in the College World Series, a generous strike around the knees near the outside part of the plate. That's always the pitcher's pitch here in Omaha. Let's see if we get a knuckle curve on the 3-2 pitch. Nope, oh. fastball missed, ball four. <laughs> Rules here in Omaha for the College Baseball World Series, the aluminum bats, of course. And they are used. The relaxed balk rule is that you can't, you don't really have to step to first base. You can spin and throw. Can't slide in and upset the second baseman. No roll blocks. On both helmets, I mean on both the uh, ear flaps on the helmets, and a new rule, ejection if you're caught with that stuff. And of course the designated hitter is permitted. Here's center fielder Armando Rios. Hitting just 077. He's just one for 13 in the College World Series after a season in which he hit just under 300. the bunt and fouls it off. Armando Rios is here for one reason and kind of like Jim Audley. Coaches that have come here often, like Skip Bertman of LSU and Gene Stevenson, know in this vast center field, you got to have a guy that can fly and go get him and Rios can do that. Skip Bertman says his team doesn't run much, but he may pick his spots to run today if he can guess right with the knuckle curve. Oh. That's the ball. One and one. Yeah, as much as we talk about the high averages in college baseball, with both pitching staffs here well-rested, Wichita State has a deep one, and I, I think you'll see Berkman try to play 
for a run earlier in the game than he normally would. Just two stolen base attempts by LSU in the College World Series, and they're one for two. A ball and a strike. We're in the top of the first inning. Low and inside. It's two and one. You know, even though both of these teams have been here, LSU, like Tookie Johnson, a lot of College World Series experience, and Wichita State has some members of their 89 championship team, still a lot of anxious moments for Tyler Green because he has never pitched a game of this importance. Throw to first, and Johnson is back. There's LSU head coach Skip Bertman in his eighth year with the Tigers and his third straight trip to the College World Series. That's outside, and his fifth in six years. That's pretty good production. On the other side, from Wichita State, head coach Gene Stevenson in his 14th year with the Shockers. And three trips here to Omaha. That's a call strike. And the count is full at three and two, and for two straight hitters now, Tyler Green has gone the distance. Yeah, I have not been able to see that knuckle curve because... Doug Mirabelli behind the plate is going to find out if he's got command of that fastball first. Johnson goes. Ball four. So control problems for Tyler Green early on. And now the meat of the LSU order. And Brent Chemnitz, the pitching coach of Wichita State, going to take a stroll to the mound. He's been in charge of these pitchers for quite some time. And in the summer, it goes up to Alaska. It works with a lot of college pitchers, and he said, I've had Ben McDonald, I've had a lot of great college pitchers. This guy, when he's on his game, is farther advanced at this stage than any of them, but it is the, the control of the fastball that he's going to have to get a handle on before he can use that specialty pitch. Umpires in this afternoon's championship game. The home plate umpire is Lee Hagler, Tony Patch at first, Bill Rosenberry at second, Dan Pedersen at third. Down the left field line is Bill Lopina. And the right field line, Dave Yeast. So Tyler Green has gone full count on the first two hitters in the LSU lineup and has walked them both. And here is Lyle Mouton. And you talk about power, this young man has it. A 6'4", 230-pound junior who has 13 homers and 62 RBIs on the year and is hitting 600 in the College World Series with three homers and 10 RBIs. Pickoff play at second out into center field. The runners will move up a base. Oddly, will send the ball back in. And the Tigers now with runners at second and third and charge the error to Tyler Green. Now, no matter how long you've been pitching, little league, college ball, big leagues, the most... The inning of the most anxiety is always the first inning of a big game like this. And right now, Tyler Green doesn't have control of his pitches or of himself. Mouton looks to strike one. As Mouton told Leslie Visser before the game, he sees the knuckle curve. He'll try to hold off of it. Six for ten in the College World Series here in Omaha and bounces in. Yeah, and Lyle Mouton stood in that on-deck circle to watch Tyler Green walk the first two hitters and not get that knuckle curve over. So he's standing there saying, okay, one and one. I'm going to look for a nice little fastball right now. If he throws that knuckle curve, I probably can't hit it anyway. And we saw what he's done so far in the College World Series. Three of those big flies. You can count on those, on those knuckle curves on 0 and 2 and 1 and 2. Ball and a strike, second and third, nobody out. Fastball toward third. Coming home with it is Jones, and the runner is out. Play at third, and he's in there. Give Lyle Mouton a fielder's choice. Johnson is out, third to home. Well, the Tigers going on contact. Mike Jones near the line has to make sure he throws the ball inside that line to Mirabelli. Makes the good tag, and now Rios very alertly moves up to third base so he can get there with just one out in the first inning. So a uh, good base running play by the Tigers and a big out for the Shockers. 
So Rios is on at third. Lyle Mouton at first. And here's cleanup hitter Rich Cordani. Cordani three for 12 in the College World Series. For a 250 average. There's a drive to center field. Audley on the run will make the catch. And Armando Rios drops home with the first run of the day. LSU up one. And a good at bat for Rich Cordani. He's been here to Omaha with his team and not had a lot of success in previous games. So to get that big RBI to get things started, a, a good lift for him. And you get an idea there why it's important to have a center fielder that can cover some ground here at Rosenblatt Stadium. Jim Audley can go get him. Two out now and a runner at first. And the quick throw. Mouton can run 20 out of 26 in the stolen base department this year. Oh, and that went off the wrist of Gary Emel. Tyler Green's going to complain that uh, he made no effort to get out of the way. Yeah, well, it, it sounded the sound of that like it hit the bat, like it hit the knob of the bat, but uh, Emel quickly shaking the hand, so it might have hit the, the hand and the bat. Ow. Ow. Is right. But I think, fortunately for Emel, it caught more of that knob than it did of his hand. It's been a little bit of everything here in the first inning. A couple of bases on balls, a throwing error by Tyler Green, a fielder's choice, a play at the plate, a sacrifice fly. And now Emel on as a hit batsman. The Tigers with runners at first and second and two out. Here's D.H. Pat Garrity. Garrity two for ten in the College World Series, and one of those hits, a home run. low ball one. And Skip Bertman certainly well aware that you can live by the home run and certainly die by it if it doesn't happen for you. Yeah, this thing, sometimes your first inning becomes your ninth inning, and that's what this is for Tyler Green right now. You give LSU two, three runs to work with, and they've got a very deep pitching staff. Well, that one low and inside, and it's two balls and no strikes. Runners at first and second for LSU. Out at second is Lyle Mouton, and at first, Gary Emel. strike and it's two and one. Number one draft pick of the Philadelphia Phillies. Also playing here in the College World Series last week. John Burke from Florida. Eduardo Perez from Florida State. Eduardo Perez, of course, son of the former great major leaguer and future Hall of Famer Tony Perez, now the hitting coach of the Cincinnati Reds. Lined in the left field, base hit. Mouton being waved around. The throw from Tommy Tillman in the plate, and he's in there. And the runners move up to second and third. LSU leads it 2 nothing. On Monday night, the Shockers defeated Creighton with Audley's throw to the home plate to home plate nailed the tying run this one is on target but Mouton and the ball get to Mirabelli at about the same time and Mirabelli tries to quickly catch the ball and make the tag at the same time doesn't want, quite have control of it and it shows you the speed again of Lyle Mouton not just a home run hitter that ball was not hit very deeply in the left field and you know that home plate scene is no day in the park either Doug Mirabelli at 210 and Lyle yeah. Mouton coming down the line at 230 that's the first hit of the day for LSU Runners at second and third now, and here's Johnny Telechia, the Tiger first baseman. Going inside, ball one. Five thirty-eight on seven for thirteen hitting here in Omaha for Telechia. That after a 3.09 regular season. Fouled off to the left. 
ball and a strike. Uh, both coaches said that the tempo of this game is going to be dictated by their starting pitchers. And, of course, this is exactly opposite of what Gene Stevenson wanted to have happen with Tyler Green control problems and being a little rattled here in the first inning. And Darren Dreifert up early. Darren Dreifert, the uh, brother of right fielder Todd Dreifert. 1-1 one, one pitch. 1-2. Hey! One, Tiger runners at second and third. There's Gary Emel at third. And Pat Garrity with the RBI single out at second. LSU leads it 2-0 here in the top of the first inning. 1-2 pitch. First strikeout of the day for Tyler Green. LSU puts two on the board. We go to the bottom of the first. 2-0 Tigers. Wichita State's leadoff man, 56 stolen bases this year, 53 for number two hitter, shortstop Chris Wimmer, a 403 hitter. Batting third, senior center fielder Jim Audley, hitting 500 here in Omaha. The cleanup hitter is sophomore catcher Doug Mirabelli. The right fielder hitting number five is Todd Dreifert. Senior third baseman Mike Jones hitting 400 in the College World Series is sixth. The designated hitter is sophomore Scott McLuhan. Batting eighth, junior first baseman Jason White, and batting ninth, sophomore left fielder Tommy Tilma. And in the field for the Tigers, Rich Cordani got the first RBI of the game. He'll play left field. Armando Rios can cover the ground in center. And Lyle Mouton in right field. Around the infield at third, Chris Mook. The shortstop is Andy Sheet. Second baseman, Tookie Johnson. Johnny Telechia at first. Behind the plate, Gary Emel and Chad Auger. We'll do the pitching. Good fastball, good slider, and the one thing Chris, or rather uh, Skip Berkman was concerned about is all the rest that O.J. has had. His pitching's been so good he hasn't gotten him to the mound too often. Chad O.J. making his first start here in Omaha. He's appeared in two games. His earn run average is zero. A junior from St. Louis High School in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and he's working on a two-run cushion. Billy Hall, Chris Wimmer, Jim Audley to the plate for Wichita State. And that misses, ball one. Hall with just one out of 13 so far here in Omaha. Tries the bunt and it's fouled and it's one and one. And first three hitters in this Wichita lineup can run. They'll bunt and they'll run. They all have good speed, steal bases, and hit and run. One one pitch to Hall. Look out. A ball and two strikes. 343 up the lines and left and right. 370 up the power alleys and a long 420 to straightaway center field here in Rosenblatt Stadium. This is no small ballpark. This one lofted down the left field line and foul. Cordani on the run couldn't get there in time and it's still a ball and two strikes to Billy Hall. Yeah, one of the more unusual defensive alignments that LSU is using. You mentioned the big center field area. Armando Rios is playing a deep left center. He's way out there. Cordani's near the line and then Lyle Mouton is shallow and right, and there's all kinds of room out there in right center field. Here's the one-two pitch to Hall. Foul back. Seven NCAA tournament games for Wichita State that they've won, and in six of them, they've trailed at some point in the game, and they find themselves down two here in the championship game to LSU. One-two pitch for Moje. Outside, two-two. I asked catcher Gary Emel, how will we know if O.J. is on? He says he'll be hitting the corners. He'll hit the corners low and inside, low and outside. He spots his pitches very well when he's on his game. 2-2 pitch. High and away, 
full count. Yeah, a lot of new terms for control. You know, OJ is, doesn't have an overpowering fastball, but it used to be, you said, well, he can throw strikes, but they use the term locate the ball. He can locate it. He can hit the outside, and he can hit the inside. Right now, he's just trying to find the zone. Full count pitch. Foul back. And that's really, even on the big league level, the first few innings, you're making a mistake if you try to get too careful and hit corners. You're better off going out, setting the tempo for the game, throwing strikes and getting ahead of hitters, and then the other pitches come along and the control gets sharper. LSU is here via victories over Florida, Fresno State, and Florida again. And Wichita State defeated Long Beach State and then Creighton twice. 3-2 pitch. Fouled away. Well, Tyler Green threw 25 pitches in the top half of the first inning, and Chad O'Jay's got at least eight or nine now to Billy Hall. And we'll put Chad O'Jay on the jugs gun. Pop foul off the left side. 88 miles an hour. His range is, say, 88 to 91 will be about tops, and he has a good slider, but that that control is most important to him. Full count pitch. Lined in the center field. Rios will play it on one hop. So Billy Hall is on. And he can run. 3-2 pitch. Knows he's going to get a fastball. And Billy Hall just... Fights that pitch off and kind of serves it the other way. And here's the disadvantage of this deep center field. Armando Rios was playing so deep that he couldn't get in on that ball. Normal depth, that's an out. Here's shortstop Chris Wimmer. Four out of 14 here in Omaha. And over at first, Billy Hall can run. 56 steals this year. That's a call strike. For those who may be unaware, LSU head coach Skip Bertman calls each and every pitch. There goes Hall. Email throwing. Too late. in steals here in the World Series. Uh, this is Wichita State's game. See, Billy Hall never looking in at the hitter, which means it is a straight steal situation. He's stealing all the way, and that's the way the Shockers manufacture their run. They don't play long ball. They haven't here in the College World Series, but they use their speed. So the Shockers with a runner in scoring position now. Hall out at second base, and Chris Wimmer at the plate, one and one. He's going. Email down to third. He's in there. Oh, Billy Hall taking the quick way around the diamond. Not a better way to answer a team that scored two runs in the top of the first inning is to come out and play aggressive baseball in your half. And that's what Gene Stevenson's doing. And Billy Hall with back to back steals. LSU hasn't had much luck throwing out runners here in Omaha. Opposing base dealers are now five out of five against the Tigers. One and two pitch to Wimmer. That one's low inside, and it's two balls and two strikes. Swing and a miss, and Wimmer goes down swinging. First strikeout of the game for Chad O'Jay. Now Billy Hall took the full count pitch and slapped it the other way, but O'Jay gets Wimmer trying to take a little bit bigger swing on that two-strike pitch, gets a fastball right by him. And here's Jim Audley, outstanding defensive center fielder, hitting 500 here in Omaha. A 328 hitter on the year with nine home runs and 80 runs batted in. And he's got an RBI waiting at third base. That's Billy.
Billy Hall. Single, stole second, stole third. That's a call strike. Anytime you see a hitter that's had the success Audley has for college level or any level, you can bet they do things fundamentally right. Watch the, the front shoulder of Jim Audley, how closed he is. Gives him a chance to keep from pulling off the ball, hit the ball in the barrel of the bat. This one chopped toward first. That'll get a run home. Kelechia makes the play, and that's out number two. So now it's 2 1 Tigers. And LSU will take that trade. They played the infield back anyway. They will give up the run. Good pitch by OJ down where Audley couldn't hit it solidly. And Telechia, probably the best fielding first baseman that Skip Berkman's ever had. He makes the easy play, and Hall scores the first shocker run. Give Billy Hall all the credit in the world for that run for Wichita State. And, you know, yesterday the Tigers were nearly unanimous in their praise of OJ's ability to keep the runners close. So Billy Hall did something this first inning. Here's Doug Mirabelli. Two out of ten here in Omaha. 13 homers, 85 runs batted in on the year. Oh. That ball is up high, and it's 2-0. Bottom of the first inning. Tigers scored twice in the top half. And Wichita State has come back with one here in the bottom. A sign of a spunky team to be able to bounce right back. Ball strike, two and one. Talking about Skip Bertman's success at LSU. That's pretty good production for the Tigers. Was the pitching coach at Miami before he went to LSU, and that's the results he's had. And Gene Stevenson, his 1982 team, he said, was probably his best all-around team. Miami won it that year. 2-1 two. Two, pitch call, strike two. Mirabelli has his doubts. What, what Stevenson likes about this team is, is not necessarily the team to win the big game like today, but over 150 games during the court. He said this is as deep and mistake-free a baseball team as he's ever had. This team hits this championship game, Wichita State, with 10 straight wins and 50 wins in its last 55 games. Foul ball. That 89 championship team had Jim Audley, Brian Buzard, Dreifert, Charlie Gindrone, Tyler Green, Mike Jones, Morgan LeClaire, Darren Paxton. They're still here looking for another championship. There's Gene. 2-2 pitch to Mirabelli. Chopped towards second. Cookie Johnson. And that'll do it for the bottom half of the first inning. Wichita State scores once with one hit. And at the end of one, LSU two, and the Shockers one. That time. Back in Rosenblatt Stadium, where LSU leads two to one, I'm here with Lyle Mouton Sr. and Mrs. Mouton, Phyllis Mouton. Mr. Mouton, you coached your son from a very small age. We know he played basketball for a couple years. Why is he better suited to baseball? Well, uh, he has natural talent. Uh, he has good eyes, good hand-eye coordination. And at 6'4", 230, if you can play baseball, you can pro possibly dominate the game a little more than in basketball. You came up from Lafayette, Louisiana, and your son's been drafted by the Yankees. They had another pretty good player, Ron Guidry, from Lafayette. That's correct. Ron has really made Lafayette popular. Uh, he was known as Louisiana Lightning. Now the Yankees have Louisiana Thunder. <laughs> They'll be glad to have him. Let's go upstairs to Greg. I thought I was Louisiana Light. <laughs> I guess not. There's a line foul. I tell you, they're right about the Louisiana Thunder. I mean, the Yankees, I think, got a steal drafting Lyle Mouton because here's a, a young man at 6'4", 230, like his father said, that has not played a lot of baseball. And he's just raw athletic talent. He's getting better all the time. 1-1 one, one pitch, Chris Mook up the middle. Billy Hall makes the play, and it's out number one. 
both Tyler Green and Chad Oje through 25 pitches in the first inning. Yeah, this inning right now will be a, an inning that both coaches say, you guys got to turn the tempo around, you pitchers. You, that first inning was too sluggish. We can't go through nine innings like that. We're going to go through the whole pitching staff. And we'll miss our flights. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Andy Sheets. Number nine here is shortstop, grounded toward right. Billy Hall cuts it off. Nice play out number two. Well, right now, Tyler Green stands to cut that pitch count from yeah. the first inning by about four-fifths. Boy, big improvement, and that's what's such a breather for a pitcher. When you've had a 25-pitch inning and all the nerves and stuff that Green had in the first inning and come, come out like this with a couple of quick outs, that'll turn that tempo around. And here's leadoff man, Tookie Johnson. Walked in the first inning and was thrown out at the plate on an infield grounder. That's a pie ball one. Well, we'll take a look at how hard Tyler Green is throwing here in the top of the second inning. Monday night he was up in the mid 90s. Lined in the right field base hit. So Johnson with the second hit of the game for LSU. Well, the batting practice paying off. Tookie Johnson says, I know what to do with that 90-mile-an-hour heater. That's what LSU was working on yesterday, just trying to take the ball the other way. Here's Armando Rios. Walked and scored the first run of the game for LSU back in the first inning. Side. Skip Bertman says what a pleasure it is to have Rios in center field in this big ballpark. And in this spot right here where he's a good bet to try to advance that runner either with a hit and run or a bunt. That one's outside. Two balls, no strikes. So after two quick outs, Tookie Johnson with a base hit and now Green has fallen behind Rios. And Lyle Mouton on deck. What's up, Hump? Uh, Rios is one guy. You see him bluffing that bunt. He's a guy that, even in this situation, will just try to bunt for a base hit and get Mouton up there. Three and zero oh to Rios. Hey. Three and one. This Wichita State pitching has been no slouch all season long. ERA leaders among Division I teams. Deepest staff that Gene Stevenson has ever had. Here's a 3-1. 3-2. Hey. No kidding, Jim. I thought I was Louisiana like <laughs> You and Gator, Ron Gidry. Fair pitcher in his day. Full count pitch, runner goes. Hit in the center field. Oddly on his horse, on his way back in. were saying yesterday that in this ballpark the ball really carries when it goes up the power alley and Armando Rios has just hit a two-run shot it's four to one LSU and, and that is as big a shock for the shockers as you could get because here's a guy three home runs on the year he's hitting in the two hole to bunt and advance runners and he catches one of Tyler Green's fastballs down and away gets it up in that jet stream the ball is carrying Obviously, when you look at this ball, very well to left center field. Unbelievable. Armando Rios from Carolina, Puerto Rico. Give uh, email and Mouton a little something to shoot for. He said, if I could hit one out to left center field. That home run is the ninth for the Tigers, and that ties a College World Series record for home runs in a College World Series. See Brent Chemnitz in that discussion on the mound, and once again it points out no matter how devastating a pitch you have, like Tyler Green's knuckle curtain, if you can't control your fastball and get ahead of hitters, you still have days like this, four runs in the second inning. 
Darren Dryford as Chemnitz continues the discussion with Tyler Green. Darren Dryford up again in the Wichita State bullpen. We talked about the power of this LSU team at the start of our telecast today. A 348 average, 42 runs, now nine home runs. Yeah, those numbers tell a lot about how important it is to come into the College World Series playing at that level. Because at the beginning of the year, Skip Bertman said, I didn't know I was going to have that kind of a hitting team. They've come to Omaha before kind of flat, not playing good baseball. But they're playing as well right now as they have at any time during the season. Mouton, big swing and a miss. Skip Bertman said yesterday, not, not to take anything away from Tyler Green, but he pitched such an outstanding game against Creighton here Monday night, he doesn't think he could pitch any better than that. And he pointed to uh, Green's 4.31 earned run average. He said, hey, somebody's scoring yeah. runs off of it. Well, he pitched a lot of games early in the year like he's pitching today. This is a guy all week long has been putting some muscle into some shots. strike two and two. Wuton had faced Green last year and said he never saw the knuckle curve. That one bounces past Mirabelli. Yeah, pretty, pretty natural thing right now for a college pitcher overthrowing a little jarred by that home run by a guy you'd least expect to hit it. And now the pitch is well out of the strike zone and Rios had a pretty good pitch. Yeah, too. he knows he's probably just a hitter from being out of the game. Already up to 42 pitches today. Full count pitch to Mouton. Grounded towards short. Wimmer on to first. And that'll do it. But put two more on the board for LSU. It's 4-1. to And our coverage of the College World Series Championship will continue after this message and the word from your local station. told you LSU head coach Skip Bertman calls every pitch from the dugout he told Jim Cott about it oh yeah no they they shake off uh, pitch whenever they want uh, there's a signal that goes in just for the catcher to call the pitch which is whatever he wants so it isn't as if they have to throw it's part of a coordinated plan it's mostly for development but now that we're into the final game and the uh, pitchers have seen tape and we've been with it they'll pretty much call their own game now you've got to figure by this stage of the season, uh, Gary Emel and Skip Bertman are pretty much on the same wavelength anyway. A different philosophy coach to coach, and Skip has always been one that calls the pitches and the location, but as he said, he gives the catcher and pitcher the final option. This is Todd Dreifert, right fielder, and the number five hitter for Gene oh. Stevenson. And O.J. falls behind 2-0. and oh. It'll be Todd Dreifert, Mike Jones, and Scott McLuhan. Jay misses up high, ball three. Toughest time to throw a strike is when you have to throw a strike. As if you're Chad O'Jay right now, three-run lead, you're saying, I just got to get it in the zone, get ahead. And then you squeeze that ball a little bit, and it flies high and away or low and in. Here's a ball strike. Would you like to pitch with a big lead or a tight game? Tell you the truth, the ideal game is 1-1 one, one game till about the seventh inning and then blow it open. That keeps your concentration in, but you have to learn to pitch with a lead, too. Some guys handle it a little better than others. 3-1 foul back, and it's now a full count. Obviously, every pitcher would like to say, hey, give me 10 runs in the first inning, but don't think it's easy that you just go out there and throw the ball over. You still have to continue pitching, and that's probably what O.J. will wrestle with right here with the early runs. And a big lead does you no good here in the College World Series. <laughs> The best hitters in the country are here in Omaha. Full count pitch. Grounded towards short. Sheets. Deep in the hole. Nice throw. Well, as we said about Telechia being about the best in the field at first base, Skip Berkman thinks Andy Sheets at shortstop might fall into that category. Good 
proper way to field the ball. Nothing acrobatic about that. Plant the foot and make the strong, accurate throw. Sheets is a transfer from Tulane University down in New Orleans. Played ball in a Tulane victory against LSU a couple years ago, and Skip Bertman liked him a lot. That's a ball strike. This is Mike Jones, senior third baseman from Wichita. Jones, six out of 15. That's up high. He had an interesting night here Thursday night. Didn't dive for a ball that uh, Gene Stevenson thought he should have and got chewed out royally in the dugout. And all Jones did after that was get an RBI single, score a run on a sacrifice fly from second base, hit a two-run homer, had another RBI single. Four for five, four RBIs, three runs scored. A little motivation never hurts, does it? And you'll see a lot of the coaches do that sometime halfway through the game, call the troops together, and Stevenson didn't like the intensity with which the Shockers were playing that night. A wake-up call. That misses, and it's ball three. I'm sure Skip Bertman doesn't like to see his pitcher falling behind now on the count as often as he has. Mentioned his depth, and he has Mike Soratka, a left-hander, and then Paul Bird, who's already pitched here at the College World Series and won. Both of them are rested and able to pitch three, four innings. So it's not that he will go too long with O.J. That's ball four. On the other side of the field, Gene Stevenson has some quality three and four pitchers that haven't been seen, and he says he won't bring them in in relief. Yeah, his number three and number four starters that got him through the entire season, they won't see action today. He's got more set roles for his pitchers. Dreyford is the long man. If he gets the lead near the end, he's got one of the best closers in college baseball in Jamie Bluma. Here's Scott McLuhan, six-foot sophomore from Loveland, Colorado. Sounds familiar, it should. His dad, Kent, played six years with the Oakland Raiders and twice an all-pro cornerback. That's ball one. Gene Stevenson making his thoughts known to McClune. In fact, Scott's older brother, Dave, cornerback for the University of Colorado. That's a strike call, one and one. Yeah, even down three runs, they're not going to sit back and wait to get the extra base hit. They'll use the speed in this situation, steal or hit and run. This one lying down the left field line, foul. That home run by Rios, I mean, it, just, it quieted this entire crowd. It was so unexpected. Here's a guy that his job really is to bunt and scratch and hit the ball on the ground and use his speed and get moved on to the plate, and he takes a... 3-2 fastball and pumps it over the left center field wall. Jim, would you say that's akin to a pitcher hitting a home run in a yeah, major league game? Very, very close to it. <laughs> Throw the first, and that was pretty close. Well, we mentioned the relaxed balk rule. That's an example of it. See, in college, you can spin and throw the ball at the same time, which is very deceptive to the base runner. Ball and two strikes to McLuhan with Jones on first. Popped up left side. Mook down the line and couldn't handle it. Back to the infield, going down the line, and Mook just couldn't get there. Got there, but couldn't hold it. Well, this is a palms-up play right here for Chris Mook. He, the palms are up, the thumbs are on the outside, and you catch it like a wide receiver, like a basket catch. But see, he tries to, with the palms down, he tries to smother that ball. Right there. And very little chance to come up with it with that method. Chris Mook should know what you're talking about, quarterback on the LSU football team. McLuhan, new life throw to first. And Jones, again, barely beating the throw. Mook said, I'm used to throwing those spirals, not catching them. Right? We talked about O.J.'s ability to keep runners close, and we're seeing good moves to first. Again. 
Yeah, and Gene Stevenson is shaking his head because this is no time to gamble and take a chance on getting picked off first base. It's a bad percentage. Might as well just take a couple of steps and get off with the pitch. One and two. Inside, two and two. So both starting pitchers, Tyler Green for Wichita State and Chad Oje for LSU, logging some pretty high pitch counts in the early inning. 2-2 pitch, grounded toward short. Sheets to second for one, to first, double play. 6-4-3 on the scorecard. We've played two here in Omaha. LSU leads it 4-1. Did you know? These pitches are up and their control's off. They'll settle down. They'll both pitch a great game. Well, we'll see. Back to you, Greg. Leslie, thank you. As Jerry well understands, uh, you can excuse young people in pressure-packed situations for having a flow of adrenaline. Yeah, that's really a good point and a good observation because that's exactly what happens to a pitcher when you're when you're anxious and eager to get the ball to home plate in a hurry. That front shoulder flies open and your control suffers. Rich Cordani, Gary Emel, Pat Garrity for the Tigers here in the top of the third inning. Cordani got the first run of the game home in the first inning with a sacrifice fly. <laughs> Rich, three for 12. Lyle Mouton's grandfather gave him some special holy ointment to yeah. rub on his bat. And hey. Lyle said, uh, Rich was having a little trouble getting started, so I loaned him some. Yeah. And yeah. worked for a sacrifice five. Yeah. LSU with two in the first, two in the second. The Shockers with one in the first. It's a 4-1 game as we play the top of the third. This one hit high in the air to center field. Jim Audley drifting back. And that's out number one. Let's take a look at Tyler Green and... Uh, now, here's that pitching motion that Jerry the Scout was talking about. See that front shoulder, just like a hitter. You want to keep that close to the hitter right there to the last possible moment. And, of course, he's much better right now than he was in that first inning. Here's Gary Emel. Hit by a pitch in the first inning. That's a ball strike. Boy, does this guy have power. Yeah, he's not just pulled the ball over the left field. Thing. His home runs go all over the ballpark. Great power to right field as well. If you pay attention to such things, Gary Emel has all three game-winning hits here in Omaha for the Tigers. Ball and a strike. Lined in the left field. Base hit. Tilma hustles it in, and Emel is on with a single. One on, one out, and that'll bring up Pat Garrity here at Rosenblatt Stadium. Overcast day, but we're glad you're with us for the College Baseball World Series Championship. Greg Gumbel along with Jim Cott and Leslie Visser. And LSU leading Wichita State 4-1. Garrity with an RBI single in the first inning is one for one. And once again, we have action in the Wichita State bullpen. Darren Dreifert up and throwing. And ready by this time. Line drive, base hit into right field. Emel will take the turn and hold at second. Two hard hit balls here in the top of the third off of Green. And let's go back to what we said at the beginning in the very first inning, Jim. That is a tremendous pitch, that knuckle curve, but if you don't get a chance to throw it, it can't do you any good. The most important pitch in baseball is still control of the fastball. It's the only pitch you can throw in all four quadrants of the strike zone. You can throw low and away, low and in, up and in, so forth. But you got to get that over to make that other pitch effective. And I think Stevenson chatting with Mirabelli may have seen enough and 
forced to go to his bullpen a lot earlier than he wanted to. Certainly wants to know more from Mirabelli right now than he does from Tyler Green. Well, you can ask a catcher and say, how's he throwing? But all you have to do is look at the scoreboard. And it's four to one, five hits and a couple of men on. And you can't afford to get much farther behind if you're Gene Stevenson. Gene Stevenson still talking about it and thinking about it. How do the Tigers do against uh, Wichita State? 348 here in the College World Series. Yeah, that's what the Tigers have hit, and that's what the batting average against for Wichita State. So it was a question as we talk often, good pitching beating good hitting. Now, that doesn't mean just good pitching in name. You got to pitch good to beat good hitting. And Tyler Green is a good pitcher, but he's not pitching good so far today. English teachers are rolling over in their graves. Oh, see, that's one of those, that's one of those baseball terms. That it's like throwing. How's he it's throwing? Throwing or breaking ball. <laughs> that's just baseball terms. You know, throw those out of the English class. Pitching good, someone somewhere just went, yeah. ooh. Well, Tyler Green is going to stick around for a while longer. Two on, one out, top of the third. And the LSU bats have been relentless so far. Big swing and a miss by Telechia, who went down swinging in the first inning. Having a terrific World Series. Seven out of 14, 500 batting average. in a while adrenaline or no adrenaline sometimes the pitcher just has to get a little angry out there yeah sometimes a visit like that and we saw what Stevenson did to his entire team the other day with that wake up call maybe he gave Tyler Green the same thing oh and two let's see what Green huh. serves up here really his first chance to throw the knuckle curve today yeah he's not been consistently ahead so we would probably get a look at it right here with a left hand hitter All right. email at second Pat Garrity at first one out 4-1 LSU top of the third. Nope, fastball down and in, missed. Tyler's dad, Chuck Green, looking on. Former quarterback of the Oakland Raiders. A ball and two strikes. There's that knuckle curve, and it got Telechia swinging. The sharp breaker down and in. And Telechia out on strikes for the second time. Well, it's hard, and it's a late break, and watch where it ends up. You'll see the ball break right below Telechia's bat, and it is next to unhittable. And that's what Tyler Green can throw if he gets ahead in the count. Here's Chris Mook. 0 for 1 with a ground out to second. Two on and two out now. That's ball. Out at second is Gary Emel. He reached with a single. And at first, Pat Garrity, who also singled. Garrity, two for two and two of the five LSU hits today. and it's one and one some might say well why doesn't he just throw that pitch to start off with then if it's so unhittable but it is the kind of pitch that if you get ahead the hitters will chase it you throw it early in the count they'll lay off it I asked uh, Tyler yesterday if he can throw it for a strike and he says yeah he does but he doesn't like to <laughs> because he has to start it up pretty high and the way it starts the batter will know what it is whereas if you start it towards the middle of the plate it looks like the fastball and then breaks down and away Turner right across the plate. One and two. Nineteen sixty six was the year Chuck Green played quarterback for the Raiders, by the way. Green runs Emel back towards second. Emel's got a pretty healthy lead off the second base. Nervous habit right there, though, for a pitcher. One two pitch. There it is again. 
Mook goes down swinging. So Tyler Green strands two runners. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Four to one, LSU. So I have a... State Farm sells life insurance. I'm an emotional pitcher, and um, even pitching in that final game, I was very emotional in that game. It was a big burden that I felt that I was relieved because I had accomplished something that, you know, I'd worked so hard to try and achieve with those other guys. And, you know, those teammates are guys you always remember and always have around. Roger, Roger Clemens, an emotional pitcher? Yeah. No. <laughs> Well, you know, the scout touched on that and talking about the two pitchers today, and, and this is the biggest game that these guys have been involved in. You talk to major league pitchers that have come through this College World Series, they'll say the first time in Omaha, it's like the mound is a blur. You know, they're so caught up in the, in the pressure of it. Bottom of the third, Jason White. First baseman, first pitch swinging, and a fly ball to right field. Lyle Mouton with his first chance of the day. Out number one should say the plate is a blur you know pitchers stare down there and it sometimes the umpire the hitter the fans they all blend together and you, it takes a couple innings to get over that maybe OJ and Green are now settling down a little if you get any more clouds the day is going to be something yeah. of a blur a few raindrops have begun to fall umbrellas popping up here and there number nine hitter left fielder Tommy Tilma well, Tilma just one out of 11 this World Series pitch. Fouled off to the left. The ball on the strike. You mentioned Wichita State had come from behind several times during the year, but it's a little more difficult for them. Not that they can't do it, but they don't get as many runs with one swing like we saw Rios hit the home run or moved on or email. They do it by bunching their hits together. Ford left. Speared by third baseman Chris Mook. And that's out number two. Tilma didn't hit it hard. Mook made the play, and that's out number two. And we go back to the top of the order, and Billy Hall, who uh, manufactured a run almost single-handedly in the first inning. Singled, stole second, stole third, and came home on a ground ball. OJ comes inside on him, ball one. Again, now this time they've they have Rios playing a little more shallow out there. And that first inning single by Hall was a pretty well hit liner that fell in front of Rios, who's playing very deep in center field. They still have Mouton over there in a big gap in right center, but that's because studying the tapes, which LSU does a lot of, they figure Hall hits the ball consistently to left field. If he should pull the ball into the right field corner, he'll run forever. Up the middle. Billy Hall is two for two. Boy, now, there's some big league hitters that would probably like to look at this swing and say, that's what I ought to be doing. Here's a guy blessed with great speed. He doesn't hit the ball in the air. All he's trying to do is make contact and hit it hard on the ground and utilize that speed. The, the little guys that run don't make any money when they hit it in the air. When they hit it on the ground, they can use those legs. Here's Chris Wimmer, and we'll keep an eye on Hall at first base. Hey. And time is called. Hall with two steals in the first inning, is 57th and 58th on the season. Towards second, Tookie Johnson with the short flip, and that'll do it. We played three, 4-1 LSU, and CBS Sports coverage of the College World Series championship game will continue after this message and a word from your local station. The first time I switched pain relievers, it was from aspirin to Tylenol. Then recently, I switched again from Tylenol acetaminophen to Advil. You see, I got these really pounding headaches, and I found Tylenol didn't always get rid of all the pain. So I tried Advil and found that for my really tough headaches, two Advil worked better than two extra strength Tylenol tablets, better than extra strength Tylenol caplets, better than Tylenol gel caps. For my tough headaches, Advil just works better. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Love that 
chicken from Popeye. New Orleans hot, New Orleans cool. Popeye's big easy summer. Easy like free red beans and rice, or free Cajun rice, or free mashed potatoes and Cajun gravy. With a 12-piece box for only $9.69. Love that chicken from Popeye. Only Popeye's has them, and now you can get them free. Now that's New Orleans, neighbor. Hi, I'm Darrell Brulette. And I'm Dan West. We're two of your local area Cotman transmission dealers. For the 21 years Cotman has been in New Orleans, you've seen us advertise that we have the knowledge and expertise to fix your transmission problems quickly and at a fair price. Cotman has always stressed quality and honesty in every area of our contact with you, and you have made Cotman number one in New Orleans. That shows that you really do care about quality and honesty. So remember, if you have a transmission problem, see your local Cotman dealer. He cares. Courtesy Honda has the sale to end all sales. Get 91 Hondas at 88 prices. At Courtesy Honda, all cars are clearly priced. No haggling, no pressure. Come to Courtesy Honda and take your choice. Get this new 91 Accord two-door coupe or four-door sedan for only $13,994. Both equipped with power moonroof, cassette, air, cruise, and more. Won a couple of games here in Omaha. Andy Sheets leads off the top of the fourth for LSU, the number nine hitter for the Tigers. Grounded out to second in his only other trip to the plate. LSU four, Wichita State one. And Tyler Green behind in the count at 2-0. Oh. And to the number nine hitter, a 167 hitter here in the World Series, or less than that, and now 3-0, that's just a no-no. Key inning right here for Tyler Green. Gene Stevenson is staying with this guy because he knows once he's on target, he can dominate the game. But this is an inning. He's got to get him out one, two, three. Man, that's nowhere close. Ball four. And we saw Darren Dreifert come down to the dugout between innings. So I would assume he's ready and loose. Oh, yeah. Stevenson made the, uh, you could almost read the body language. Like if he gets one man on, get up and get ready because it just can't go too much longer. And Stevenson to the top step of the dugout. That's the old speed him up sign. Get ready in a hurry. And you've got to figure Dreifert doesn't need much. Top of the order, Tookie Johnson. Five straight balls from Green. And here comes Stevenson. And that's it for Tyler today, I'm pretty sure. We have seen the last of Tyler Green this afternoon. And well, Darren Dreifert being called in. Both coaches, as you would expect at any game, said the starting pitchers have the key to this whole thing. And so far, it's been that way. Will they love it in the LSU dugout? We'll be back. looking for its first Wichita State a winner here two years ago USC well, they've got a ways to go to catch the Trojans yeah, those names at the top that they kind of dominated college baseball for years when you thought college baseball you thought Southern Cal Arizona State Texas but you look at these entries the last few years here at Omaha and it shows you how really the parody in college baseball Creighton being here this year for the first time hey, John and Carol Dryford of Wichita have to be uh, Pretty excited, don't you think? Out in right field is son junior Todd Dreifert. And now on the mound, freshman Darren has come on for the Shockers. That's Darren, and there's older brother Todd out in right field. Todd, another member of that championship team here two years ago. The count is one ball, no strikes to Armando Rios. I'm sorry, make it Tookie Johnson. And it's now one and one. Tookie with a walk and a single.
much talk about that knuckle curve. What do you think the feeling is now in the LSU yeah, well, dugout with Tyler Green out of the game? It's accomplishment number one. A little bit of relief, but you see that fastball at 91 miles an hour. They keep on coming out of that Wichita State bullpen. And Bluma, the closer, if he gets there, throws even harder than that. Out of the frying pan into the fire. Ball and two strikes to Johnson. Chopped over the pitcher's head. Billy Hall makes the tag throw at the first double play. And a nice play by Billy Hall. The second baseman unassisted and then the throw on to first. Yeah, a little bit of the rule differences in college baseball right here. Now on the pro level, you'd see the base runner probably just try to almost block the second baseman and keep him from throwing the ball. You can't do that in the college level, and Hall makes a very alert play. So Dreifert quickly now with two, two outs and nobody on, and here's the slugger, Armando Rios. Two-run homer in the second inning, his last trip to the plate. Well, is he going to have something to chirp about if, this, if LSU goes on to win this game? And say, all you big, strong guys, they were looking for the long ball. Rios with a walk in the first, two-run homer in the second. Ooh! And Rios not exactly thrilled with the inside pitch. Well, you see Mirabelli's target, but wow, the way Dreifert uh, unloaded that ball, it almost looked like it was headed right that way. And Rios threw the bat down, stared out at the mound. You can always tell who hit the home run the last time up. Yeah, that, that doesn't really accomplish anything, hitting a guy the next to you. The best way to do is get him out. If they're hitting you hard, you push him back off the plate, but that doesn't really accomplish anything or prove anything. Well, you know, Lyle Mouton would like to supply his own answer here. That's ball one. Mouton has four career dingers, as does Emel. Emel has all of his this year. A couple of big leaguers there, Pete and Cavillia of the Tigers, and Ed Sprague with the Toronto Blue Jays. Oh. Ball two. The other thing that hit Batsman, if it was intentional, I would hope it was not, because why would you want to put that guy on base and have to face Mouton with, a, with another runner at first base? It's early, and if you're talking about setting tones and tempo, three and zero. Oh. That Lyle Mouton swing three and zero. Oh, yeah. oh. I think he'll be hitting if he wants to. Hey. Three and one. A lot of times, and this happens even in the big league level, a lot of hitters aren't comfortable hitting on three and zero oh because you tend to be a little anxious. overswing a little bit. Oh, that's ball four. Second walk of the inning, first by Dreifert. You and I have talked about this before, Jim. But I think I think ball players in the major leagues particularly should be allowed to hit three and zero more often because it may be the best pitch you see all day. Well, there's a lot of controversy about uh, you'll hear teams make a lot of first pitch outs and people say, oh, why don't they swing at the first pitch? A lot of times the best pitch you get to hit is the first pitch and then you mentioned the 3-0 situation yeah most of the time good hitters know they're going to get a fastball to hit there the managers have to look at it also i want to get a base runner i want to take a chance of that pitcher maybe missing the strike zone runners at second and first now for lsu with two out here's rich cordani with a sacrifice fly in the first inning and a fly out the left in the third hey. strike one At second is Armando Rios and Lyle Mouton at first. Four to one, LSU. The Tigers trying to add to it here in the top of the fourth inning. Cordani gets a good pitch to hit here. Dreifert may regret that hit batsman. Rio scores. Mouton will 
score. Cordani on his way to third. Six to one, LSU. the regret you were talking about he definitely did rips this ball against the right center field wall and what a nice day for rich cordani who had, had trouble in previous appearances here at omaha the rbi sacrifice fly and now the big triple to give the tigers a five-run lead and jim you questioned whether or not that hit batsman was intentional and you said why would you want to bring up the meat of the order yeah here's email we are still amongst the meat of the order. <laughs> 1 0 pitch. Drive to right. Dreifert on the run makes the catch, and that retires the side. But not before the Tigers put another two spot on the board. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 6 to 1, LSU. of the 1973 World Series, and that, that was due to hitting and pitching. I remember I struck out 15, actually 29 guys in two games, uh, where I won one to nothing against Oklahoma, and then we lost, actually. They took me out uh, against SC, and they made one of the most remarkable comebacks in the history of the tournament uh, to win against us. But uh, they said, here's the MVP. Take this watch, and we'll see you later in the big league. <laughs> Yeah, well, they've seen him later for a lot of amazing how ball players can remember those numbers. You know, 29 strikeouts in two games from that long ago. And he is the last player to win an MVP from a team that didn't win the championship. Jim Audley leading off the bottom of the fourth. Strike one. You know, I've always thought that it's a giant step for a pitcher if he can be physically intimidating out there on the hill before he even throws one. And that certainly has to be the case with Dave Winfield on the mound. Before Bo Jackson came on the scene, Winfield was probably a guy that could have been a professional, a good professional player in three of the big-time sports. Drafted in all three, football, basketball, and baseball. 1-1 one, one pitch. 2-1. And, and now the Shockers with a little bit of a hole. Still early, bottom of the fourth, but they are down five, and they've managed just two hits off of Chad Auger. And more importantly, they have knocked Wichita State ace Tyler Green from the hill. That's outside ball three. Yeah, it's still a game of, of who controls who. So, yeah, it's a five-run lead, but most of these college teams score seven, eight, nine runs a game. So if you're Auger, this is a very, very critical inning with the middle of this order coming up. You want to get your team off the field and get back swinging the bats. Third base side, Mook will take a look, but it drifts away. Audley will be followed by Doug Mirabelli and then Todd Dreifer. That's a good look at third baseman Chris Mook. Interesting story about Chris Mook, the first pass he ever completed in college back in 1989 was to Wesley Jacob for a 73-yard touchdown against Ohio University. And really played baseball in the last couple of years. His dad, Joe, played football and baseball at LSU. That's ball four. So oddly gets the Shockers off to a good start here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And if you're just joining us, we welcome you to Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, along with Jim Cott and Leslie Visser. I'm Greg Gumbel. LSU with two in the first, two in the second, two in the fourth. Wichita State with run, one run in the first inning, and it's a 6-1 to one Tiger lead. And this one's for all the marbles in college baseball. Mirabelli grounded out the second to end the first inning, his only other at bat. That's outside.
think Skip Bertman in relaying those signs in is uh, calling for strikes. He's probably calling for a lot of zone one fastball. Just throw it over and see if my defense can make a few plays. Jim Audley, 21 out of 27 in the stolen base department, but I don't think you see Gene Stevenson trying to run himself out of an inning here. Especially with OJ having problems finding the plate. Yeah, and if OJ continues to have trouble finding the strike zone, you'll see Mike Sorotka, a left-hander, go down to the bullpen. The, the Shockers have a few switch hitters and some left-hand hitters, so he can go to Sorotka in the middle, and he still has... Rick Green was an outstanding closer for LSU to finish the ball game. Here's Skip Bertman. Saying, I need a strike. I need a strike. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Mirabelli. Go! That one gets past him now. And Audley moves on to second. Well, the pressure of the moment is the only thing responsible for this. A 6-1 lead, and Chad Auger is not trying to hit corners, I'm sure. He just wants to throw the ball in the strike zone, knowing that he's got this five-run lead. Goes back to a point you brought up a couple of innings ago. Some pitchers are, are really better. Their concentration is better in 1-1 one -one games than when they have big leads. Charge email with a pass ball. And a 3-0 count on Mirabelli. Three and one. And we're going to get a little action now in the LSU bullpen. There's Mike Sorotka with the outstanding curveball. He's got a win here in postseason play. Three one to Mirabelli. Lined in the right center field. Muta on the run is there. And Audley tags at second and moves on to third. Mouton is big, 230 pounds, but he can get around. Yeah, speed is a great asset because you can use it when you're out there in the field as well as when you're at the plate. And that's, a, that's something that Lyle Mouton has that's very deceptive. He, he kind of he glides to the ball, but he has great speed. And one thing that Skip Bertman said the scouts maybe he didn't draft him as high is because he, he's not really a high intensity type player. He sort of glides after the ball and it, it appears that he's not hustling, but he has great speed. Well, Skip Bertman has made a trip to the mound now and uh, we look at Lyle taking it easy out in right field. I want to remind you that uh, coming up next from Westchester, the Buick Classic. We'll take you to live golf from Westchester Country Club after uh, we wrap up this college baseball championship game here in Omaha. A little, uh, fla little baseball flavor to that golf tournament right there. Chris Perry, the nephew of Hall of Famer Gaylord and son of a former teammate of mine, Jim Perry's tie for the lead in that golf tournament. Here's Todd Dreifert. Runner third, one out, and outside corner for strike one. There's Audley at third. What a great throw he came up with from center field against Creighton here Monday night. Fly ball, left center field. Cordani on the run, on the run, and made the catch. And on the tag, Audley will come home for the second run of the day for Wichita State. We talked about how the ball carries here at Rosenblatt Stadium. I don't think you get a better example than that. Yeah, Cordani with his first year in left field, he's been a third baseman, and he, he has to drift with this ball and just make that leaping catch if there's any doubt as to which way the wind is blowing. Just routine fly balls, and that's right out there near that 370 mark. Rios there to give him a little assist and make sure he hangs on to the ball. And then to uh, paste him against the wall out there in left center. The flag is blowing, or the flag shows the wind blowing right to left. Here is poor Donnie. Two out now, nobody on. And the pass ball hurts the Tigers. Mike Jones with a base on balls back in the second inning looks at strike one.
ball and a strike. Check swing, foul, and it's one and two. In the dugout, Wichita starter Tyler Green. He was looking for a bigger day than he had. There have been a lot of other outstanding pitchers in college ball that have not had success here. Ben McDonald, for one, but still going to be a good big league pitcher. Tyler Green hopes he will do the same thing. One two pitch. Just missed on the outside, and the appeal doesn't go at first base with umpire Tony Patch. We were talking yesterday about Tyler Green and approaching this game, and you said when you were his age, you were in the majors. Not ready to be, but. <laughs> But it's the uh, it's the years of training here that I think help pitchers grow up and mature more the college baseball experience. Two balls, two strikes. Got him swinging. We've played four, six to two LSU and CBS Sports coverage of the College World Series championship game continues after this message and a word from your local station. And uh, I think if, you know, we could win this game today and go our national championship, I think it would make it a lot easier on us. Yeah, but it is a little bit difficult to take a look at this ball game and know that it's the end of the line, Jim. Ground ball towards second. Billy Hall. That's out number one. Yeah, there's a lot of Pat Garrity's out there that aren't going on to professional baseball. And some commenting during batting practice yesterday, this is my last practice. They were joking about it, but you know there's... A little bit of a sentimental feeling there. Their last experience as a college baseball player. And not just playing the game, but I think the camaraderie that develops when you have 20 to 25 guys together for three or four month period of time. That's the thing the big leaguers miss when the career ends. Johnny Telechia has gone down swinging twice in two trips to the plate. But his first look at Darren Dreifert. Dreyford in his second inning of work now. This LSU lineup puts constant pressure on the opposing pitcher. They put 71 runners on base in their previous three College World Series games. That's an average of almost three an inning and today in four and a third innings they put 13 men on base so far trying to bring that championship to the SEC for the second year in a row Georgia did it last year hey. bullet down the middle two and one last year's game was a case where the starting pitcher did control against a team that was a great hitting team Oklahoma State but freshman Stan Payne and, and left-hander Vern Fleming came in and just shut that good hitting team down 2-1 pitch to Telechia. Ball three. You pitchers love that phrase, good pitching beats good hitting, don't yeah. you? <laughs> Dizzy Dean or Casey. Casey must have come up with that years ago. <laughs> I'm sure it was some pitcher somewhere. Oh. Ball four. That's the fifth base on balls issued by Wichita State pitching today, the second by Dreyfus. One on, one out, and that brings Chris Mook to the plate. Mook 0 for 2. Ball one. And now Dreyfus having trouble locating the strike zone. Kind of scary, a kid this big throwing this hard as a freshman. Ball two. Now we have a couple number one picks. We mentioned Tyler Green and John Burke from Florida that went in the first round as pitchers, but this has really been a much more of a series for the hitters. A lot of walks, a lot of runs scored. They're going to, before this is over, break a lot of records for scoring runs. Well, we have seen some long home runs, too. 2-0 pitch. 2-1. Two 
top of the fifth inning. LSU with a four-run cushion. And hoping to add to it. Back to the pitcher. Dreyfer to second for one. The relay. Double play. So the Tigers are gone in the top half of the fifth. No runs, no hits, nobody left. We'll go to the bottom of number five, 6-2 LSU. Today, a guy losing his... Doctor. <laughs> CBS Sports coverage of today's College World Series championship game is sponsored by AT&T, the right choice. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And by Cannon, the official camcorder of Little League Baseball. Well, we go to the bottom of the fifth inning here at Rosenblatt Stadium. Six to two, LSU is leading, and Darren Dreifert, who came in to relieve, is also the new designated hitter as he steps to the plate. Well, you talked about how hard he throws the ball as a freshman. We're going to get a chance to see how well he hits. You may recall... Uh, it didn't meet with a great deal of uh, goodwill that he hit Armando Rios, and now Darren Dreifert steps to the plate. Yeah, I don't think we'll see any of that going on for Mosier. They got one thing on, my, on their mind, Chad Oje and LSU. Throw some strikes, fill in those frames, and hold on to that four-run lead. So the freshman, obviously a pretty good hitter as well. Two balls and a strike. You know, we don't see this happen too often where you've got a pitcher who comes in and he also uh, goes to the plate now. What kind of effect do you think that might have on it? Well, I think you feel like you're more in the ball game. That designated hitter rule, you, you had to figure out what to do with your idle time. When you're, as, when you're there as a hitter, it makes you feel like you're much more a part of it. This is something new for Wichita State here in the College World Series. In the previous three games, they've had the same nine hitters going to the plate in every single inning. This is the first guy up who's been different from the previous three games. I think that's pretty... You know, typical of a lot of the good ball clubs that get here. You don't see a lot of platooning. They got the set lineup, and the key is coming to Omaha when you're when you're playing your best baseball of the whole year. Some teams start out fast, they taper off, and both of these ball clubs have been playing outstanding baseball the last few weeks. 2-2 two -two pitch to Darren Dreifer. Popped it up. On the infield, Telechia. Drifting over towards second base makes the catch for out number one. See, Johnny Telechi is explaining how the wind is drifting the ball right there as Mike Soratka gets up for the second time. That flag is straight away center field out over the 420 sign. And Lyle Mouton took a pretty good shot at it last week. Yeah, he's opened some eyes uh, as well as Emel with some of the long, but especially Mouton because he's got that athletic body. He's got a chance to be a great pro player. One hopper to short. Andy Sheets on the first, and Jason White is out for the second out of the inning. Who's won this the last few years? Well, Georgia last year. As Jim mentioned, on the great pitching performance, Wichita State. Stanford was the champion two years running. Arizona, back in 1986. And if this holds up, this will be the first team, really, that is that has won it more with offense than with great pitchers, especially in the final game. Take nothing away from O.J., but it's been Mouton and the offense that has carried the LSU Tigers. Some of those other champions, Jack McDowell of Stanford, Glenn Brummett a couple of years ago for Wichita State. The, the pitchers were the big stars. This one hit in the left center field. Cordani over. Rios over. Rios at the wall to make the catch. Skip Bertman said he could go and get him, and that's why he likes him in the middle of his outfield defense. We played five here at Rosenblatt Stadium. LSU leads it by four. I used to be pretty good. Back in 
Rosenblatt Stadium specifically in left center. You know, the College World Series has been held here annually since 1950, and Skip Bertman said it took him about that long to get comfortable here. He said that the swirling wind patterns, which he called not unlike Candlestick Park, mean that you have to have a really alert center fielder. You guys have referred to it. A center fielder who will look at the flag, not just in the beginning of the game, but all through the game. It also helps to have a speedy center fielder who can track the ball, a guy pretty much like Armando Rios. Let's go up to Greg Gumbel, and Greg, don't leave without me. <laughs> you know, last night, Leslie thought it was just an innocent question when our producer said, who has the best eyesight among the three of you? And Leslie said, mine is perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Six to two, LSU, the Tigers, bat here in the top of the sixth inning. We were talking about some of those baseball expressions, like pitching good. The other is watch the wind. You can't see the wind. That's why you have to watch the flag to see which way the wind is blowing. Of course, uh, last weekend when we raced those fun clouds out of yeah. town, uh, <laughs> you see a lot of you see a lot of wind. Yeah. Oh, one pitch to Andy Sheets, and it's now one and one. LSU six runs, six hits, no errors. Wichita State two runs, just two hits on the day, and one error. That throwing error led to a run in the first inning by pitcher Tyler Green, who is no longer in the game. Two balls and a strike. The comment Skip Bertman made that Leslie mentioned that it took him long to get comfortable here. I think that's an indication of this LSU team this year. They have come here a few times and they are very comfortable, not quite as awed by this spectacle. Deep center field, oddly. For out number one. Another fine crowd on hand at Rosenblatt Stadium today, 16,612. And these crowds have gotten bigger as the tournament has progressed. Just 1,700 per session back in the 1950s to over 15,000 in the 1990s. Tookie Johnson toward first. And Jason White makes the play unassisted for out number two. Yeah, and if you've come here for the first time as a college player, you look at those attendance figures, and you play again in front of 15,000 fans for the first time in your life, that's, that's why getting over that experience and the distraction factor, very helpful to LSU. A lot of these guys, Tookie Johnson's like a veteran here. Very easy to walk out onto this field for the first time and be awed if you've played the college ball in front of smaller crowds. Here's Armando Rios. Last time up, yeah. nailed by a pitch, and so Armando tries to lay one up the third base line. That's what uh, Wichita State expected he might do that time he hit the home run. You're talking about that the crowds and being distracted by it. On the big league level now, they call that the double deck syndrome. You know, a kid comes up for the first time, and he looks good in spring training in parts like this, and then you get in the big league stadiums, and you say, oh, man, you look up in the upper, they got people up there, too. No balls and one strike to Rios. Oh. One and one. You know, looking at that attempted bunt up the third baseline, a, uh, a more physical ball player in the major leagues might drag it up the first baseline and dare a pitcher who yeah. has hit him with a, with <laughs> a he, pitch to pick it sure. up. Yeah, if he was sure. One, one pitch. Line down the left field line. Did not catch it. Bounced out of his glove, and Rios on his way to second with a double. Tommy Tilma made the valiant effort, couldn't hold on. Well, it's the little guy, Armando Rios, that's swinging the hot bat. It's a good job by Tilma. Not only diving to try to make the catch, but he got his body in front of it enough to keep it from going to the wall. The ball goes to the wall. And it's an easy triple for Rios. In fact, it could have been an inside the Parker. And here's Lyle Mouton. Oh. Check swing. Ball one. You mentioned the day that Armando Rios has had a walk in the first inning, homered in the second, hit by a pitch in the fourth, and doubles here in the sixth. He has scored three times and driven home two runs. 1-0 to Mouton. Oh. One and one. Lyle, a fielder's choice, a ground out to short and a base on ball. And then he and Rios rode home in the fourth inning on Rich Cordani's 
three base hit. Play on at second base, and Rios dives back. You were sitting in the stands uh, last Friday, and you called a Mouton home run. Are you feeling adventurous? He had yet? that feeling. Not yet, but if he gets ahead of the driver, he gets ahead of the count, he's going to have a big swing. Ripped foul past third, one and two. Had a big swing anyway. <laughs> The LSU Tigers, do they swing the bat? Now they got to add one more guy to that. <laughs> Armando right Rios. Through. Armando Rios. Good numbers for both Emel and Lyle Mouton. Yeah, and most of those home runs have come in situations where they've been able to get the pitcher behind in the count. This is one of the times now where Dreifer should have the advantage at 1-2. short Wimmer up throwing and that does it for the Tigers here in the sixth inning we'll go to the bottom of the sixth Wichita State needs four to pull even at 6-2 LSU Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium Omaha Nebraska welcome back everyone to the college World Series championship game between LSU and Wichita State, Greg Gumbel along with Jim Cott and Leslie Visser and Billy Hall leading off the last of the sixth inning here. And it's 0-1. Armando Rios, a two-run homer for the Tigers in the second inning. Tyler Green departed early for Wichita State. Just didn't have it today, and LSU ties a College World Series record with its ninth home run. Hall in the left field. Cordani on! He got it! Bill Lopina looking him right in the face made the call. Here's another one of those palms up. If you're Rich Cordani, you hope that you could get the glove in that position. He couldn't do it. He just made a great backhand grab. And you see the ball in the web and Bill Lopina, there's the left field line umpire right on the call, right on the play to make nobody gets a better view of it than he did. What right. a great play. I don't know. Can an umpire get a better view than that? And <laughs> yeah, look at Chad Auger's reaction. Let's take one more look at Rich Cordani's play. Well, it, it takes hitting, but usually in championship games, you'll also see pitching and good fielding plays play a big part in it. Well, that's as close as you can get. Played third base last year. Chris Wimmer is the hitter. Went down swinging in the first. Bounced into a fielder's choice in the third. And Chad Auger has done the job against this Wichita lineup. He has allowed two runs, two hits. And has gotten some pretty good defense. Yeah, a little early yet to be counting outs because Wichita State can, can come back. But if he gets through this inning, then LSU's dugout gets in that position where you say nine more, eight more. You just look for that out at a time. Does a pitcher like that? Pitcher like to be reminded of that? Yeah, a pitcher got to block that out of his mind. I mean, you get to a point where you say the next out I win the game, and you get him the next out I win the game. But you got to guard against looking, looking at it from that standpoint. A ball and a strike to Chris Wimmer. Takes the bunt. Takes ball two. Your immediate concentration is on the guy in the batter's box, and where do I want to pitch him? And then after the out is made, you can those thoughts run through your mind. We were looking at the speed of the pitch earlier in the game. How fast were you when you first came? I have no idea. No? Glad I didn't. Probably would have never got a chance to play. <laughs> Chop. Ford short. Andy Sheep tried to backhand it, and it bounced right on past him in the left field. I think that's the way they teach it. Now, Andy Sheets made a quick decision. He didn't think he could get the body in front of it, and he just took one of those old, the old bullfighter approach to it and didn't get any leather on it. And, and Skip Bertman would probably like to see him come in and kind of circle that ball and get his body in front of it. They have given Chris Wimmer a base hit. Here's Jim Audley. 
outside ball one. In defensive sheets, by the time the championship game rolls around and they've played here for eight or nine days, the infield here does get a little quick, similar to what artificial turf would be, and that's why that ball had a lot of bounce and a lot of overspin. noise coming from the third base side Wichita State supporters you'd have to think that they were the local favorite now that Creighton has been eliminated LSU is one of the schools that really gets a good following of fans that come of course it's an annual event for them now they seem like they're here every year runner goes outside the throw down too late no, 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 no. He's the right here. He's that's about six Safes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Umpire Bill Rosenberry out at second. Well, you got to like the way Rosenberry makes the call because he not only calls him safe, but he points out where he's got the bag. Wimmer with the head first slide. And Tookie Johnson tries to reach around and make the tag, but Wimmer has the hand in there. And that's what Bill Rosenberry was pointing out. He said, no, he's got the bag right there. Wimmer with his 54th stolen base of the year, and the bunt attempt by Audley is foul. So Gene Stevenson not going to stop being aggressive just because he's down four. After Audley will come cleanup hitter Doug Mirabelli. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Instead, O.J. spins towards second. Yeah, this email's going to go out talking. This works against O.J. A while ago, I referred to uh, pitchers have these nervous habits, and sometimes you get caught up with a guy on second base. You forget about the big pitcher, 6-2 game, and the guy at the plate's a guy can do the damage. So forget about that guy on second. I mean, your catcher and infielders will be responsible for keeping him reasonably close. Just want to go after that guy in the batter's box. Mark LaRosa up and throwing in the LSU bullpen again. Two balls and a strike. Two and two. And that's really what they talk about by staying focused out on the mound, isn't it? Yeah, the good pitchers, no matter what the level, have like tunnel vision. Some of them don't even realize the hitters in the batter's box. Roger Clemens would be a good example. You see him looking at Tony Pena and it's like the hitter doesn't even exist. He just sees that target, throws right toward it. Here's the 2-2 to Audley. Line fouled on the third base line. That's not to say that you shouldn't be aware of who's at the plate and what his strengths and weaknesses are. Believe me, pitchers will tell you they're not only aware of who's at the plate. He can tell you who's in the on-deck circle right now and the score and how many outs he needs to win. Those thoughts are running through there, but you got to try to zero in on just one for the moment. There's Doug Mirabelli waiting his turn. Another 2-2 offering to Audley. And Audley uh, in the midst of a pretty good at-bat here. Mike Soratka, the left-hander. I believe I said LaRosa earlier. That's my error. He's been up a couple of times. LaRosa would be the lefty that Skip Burton would also go to late in the game. Right-hander Rick Green. Two balls, two strikes. Chris Winner is second with one out. Ball three. Jay up to 89 pitches now. That's a lot for one out in the sixth inning. Of course, only has one complete game all year. Chances are he won't get one today. Full count pitch to Audley. Up the middle. Picked off by Tookie Johnson. The throw to first in time. Two out now and a runner at third, and here's Doug Mirabelli, and we'll take this opportunity to remind you up next here on CBS Sports after this championship game. Live third-round coverage of the Buick Classic from the Westchester Country Club in Rye, New York. Many of the best golfers in the world prepping for the U.S. Open, where defending champ Hale Irwin 
leading the game. Here's Mirabelli. Ball one. Tony passed down at first, says Mirabelli did not go around. Doug Mirabelli from Las Vegas, Nevada. Pretty important, too, as this game progresses now that Wichita State does not squander the chance for even one run right here. Yeah, and here's one of those pitches. Mirabelli with 85 RBIs is their leader. you got a 2-0 count, the man on base. So here, here's where you're going to look for a pitch to drive and, and get back in the ball game with an extra base hit. Ball three. For the most part, Chad O.J. has been tough when he had to be today, but he's up over 90 pitches today, and he may be getting a little tired. Three-0 pitch, ball four. And here comes Skip Berkman. Yeah, you got a left-hand hitter, two men on, and a left-hander with a good curveball in the bullpen, so it would logically be the time to make the move. Skip was a, a catcher in his playing days. Coached the 88 Olympic team, so pitching has always been his strength as a coach. I imagine there are those who would be diametrically opposed to what Skip believes when he calls each and every pitch from the dugout. Yeah, you talk to most of the kids and some of his own that get to the big leagues, they would rather call their own game, but he made a point that it is a an instructional process. The, the college game is much more of a hands-on game, a coach's game than a player's game. And so he uses that pitch calling that he does to try to teach the pitchers and catchers how they ought to go at certain hitters, whether you agree with it or not. I don't particularly. I think the, the pitcher and the catcher are the two people that know what pitch to throw, no matter what level you're at. Well, Auger will remain, at least to pitch to Todd Dreifert. Soratka in the bullpen. Over at third is Chris Wimmer. And at first, Doug Mirabelli. And you might even think that even if Auger does escape from this inning, that he may not come back out for the seventh. He has Dreifert. Outside, ball one. Another sign that O.J. might be tiring. He's had a lot of pitches up. That's uh, early indication to coaches right there. Once that fastball starts getting up, it means you're losing your leg drive and you can't get it down around the knees where you want it. Hey. That one caught the outside corner, and it's one and one. Most of the time, it's not the arm that gets tired. It's, it's the body from driving off that pitching rubber, and that's what causes the, the ball to go high. Talking with the starting pitchers yesterday, both O.J. and Tyler Green, they both thought the strike zone tends to shrink as the game progresses. Followed away, one and two. Most of the time at Omaha, the strike zone has been liberal because over the years they've had so many high-scoring games, the 24 tens and a lot of walks, and it's not as entertaining a game. So to make it a little crisper pace, they have enlarged the strike zone. But this year, the pitchers have still been rather wild. Call at the plate as Dreisford stepped out. Chris Wimmer at third, Doug Mirabelli at first, two on, two out for Wichita State. Trying to put some runs on the board here in the last of the sixth. And a one two pitch to Dreisford. Toward short, Sheets doubles it up, the force at second, and that'll retire the Shockers. Six to two after six, LSU and CBS Sports coverage of the College World Series championship game will continue after this message and a word from your local station.
Back at Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium here in Omaha, we played six innings and LSU leading Wichita State by a score of six to two. And if you're going to play that little game of uh, find the left-handed pitcher in the broadcast booth, <laughs> <laughs> you continue to look, and uh, there he is. Welcome back, everyone. Greg Gumble along with Jim Cott and uh, Leslie Visser somewhere out there. 99 pitches Chad Oje has now thrown for uh, the LSU Tigers and Skip Bertman has to be wondering uh, just where do you cut it off at what point will he have lost his magic and it might be better to bring on a fresh arm I'll tell you what's pretty what? gutsy move allowing Oje to face Dreyfer with the left hander Soropka down in the bullpen a lot Rich of confidence in that guy excuse me Jim Rich Cordani Gary Emel and Pat Garrity here in the seventh inning for the Tigers Cordani with a big two run triple back in the fourth inning to bring home two Darren Dreifert came on in relief of Tyler Green with one on and no one out in the fourth inning. So he's beginning his third full inning of work. I'm sorry, his fourth full inning. One one pitch toward right field. Billy Hall cuts it off. Billy Hall's been busy at second base. Yeah, you can see the way that ball picks up speed. I mean, it really is like artificial turf. This ball with a lot of overspin, and once again, it's speed in the field. That's what enables Hall to make that play look rather easy. It's the speed and the quick jump. One down, and here's Gary Emel. Six-two senior from Baton Rouge. Dreifert goes down on the mound. <laughs> Had something on it and still was fairly close to the plate. That's right. You see that front foot now with Oje and Tyler Green having been out there. That's one of the areas a pitcher usually pays attention to before the inning. You want to smooth that little area where you plant that front foot and Dreifert caught the side of the hole there. It slipped. 2-0. with 25 home runs on the season. Let me make a correction, Greg, earlier in the broadcast. We talked about Georgia's winning the championship with two fine left-handers, Stan Payne, and it was Dave Fleming who's now playing pro ball. I think Vern Fleming was the basketball star mm. somewhere down that way. Strike two. can also pop a three-pointer now and then. Two balls, two strikes to Gary Emel. Nobody on and one out here in the top of the seventh. Toward third, Mike Jones. Got him. Mike Jones, 17th round draft pick of the Cincinnati Reds. You see him get that glove and the body on balance to get ready to make this play. And a member of that championship team of 1989. <laughs> Baseball fans present and future. Here's Pat Garrity. Inside, ball one. All the way from Baton Rouge, the LSU Tigers. from Omaha. Jim Henry, <laughs> the head coach of the Creighton Blue Jays, had made a good showing here at, a, at the College World Series. Foul ball, one and two. Boy, didn't they, though? And, and they're all over the country. College coaches like Henry and Bertman, they don't all get to Omaha, but they're guys that have developed good programs. They have summer camps where they're teaching youngsters how to play the game. And Boy, he had a couple of fine players. Scott Stahoviak, Collegiate Player of the Year, was his star. One week ago today, we saw this fine pitcher, Mike Heathcott, shut Clemson down. Swing and a miss. Garrity goes down on strikes, and 
Dryford gets the Tigers in order here in the seventh. We'll go to the last of the seventh. Wichita State down four. Little League Baseball. the seventh inning that's become as much of a ritual as the cry to play ball at the start hasn't it makes you feel like uh, you're it you're part of the game baseball one of the few games where the fan gets a chance to participate you can sing and the contests go on I think around the majors there's been a little talk of too much fan participation this year call strike to Mike Jones leading off the bottom of the seventh for Wichita State it'll be Jones Darren Dreifer and Jason White Chad O'Jea delivers high. He's pitched a dandy. Working the seventh inning, he's allowed two runs, three hits. To a Wichita State team that hit 336 on the season. Tapper up the first baseline. O'Jea makes the play. Remind you once again. Once Jim and I wrap things up here in Omaha, we'll send you out to Rye, New York for live third round coverage of the Buick Golf Classic, where Hale Irwin is the one shot leader. Getting tuned up to win another Open, I guess, isn't it? Darren Dreifer came on to pitch in the fourth inning and stayed on as the designated hitter in place of Scott McLuhan. Dreifer popped out to first in his only plate appearance so far. That's where we are. Chad O'Jay will launch a pro career when this thing's over. He's a third round draft pick of the Cleveland Indians. Jay's got still plenty, still has plenty of pop in that fastball. Dreifert was a mile behind it. Yeah, he's got that wiry body. You know, not, not big like Tyler Green was, but very wiry. And you can see in his eyes the intense, the competitive anger that he has. And that's what Skip Burton likes about him. Strike three call. Now sometimes no matter how great an arm you have or a curveball, big league pitchers will tell you that that you can will the ball in the spot that you want it and get hitters out. It's called pitching with conviction. And that's what Ogier does. Third strikeout of the day for Chad Ogier. Hey. Nobody on and two out now. And strike one to Jason White, who is 0 for 2. ball just under 80 miles an hour. Billy Hall has two of the three hits for Wichita State. And Chris Wimmer has the third. And that's been it off of Chad Oje today. 1-1. One one. Two balls in a strike. We had a few sprinkles about 45 minutes ago, but it feels like the rain has moved on, Jim. Hit in the air, right side. Mouton in a few steps. And the Shockers go in order here in the seventh. We'll go to the top of the eighth. LSU clinging to a 6-2 lead. Call now and you can have 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and this valuable 120-page Guide to Understanding Money and Markets. That's 13 weeks of the journal for the news and ideas you need every business day. And this guide free, which tells you everything you want to know about money and markets. All for only $37, a 24% savings off the newsstand price. Call now, toll free, 800-334-2900. That's 800-334-2900 for today's Wall Street Journal.
Hey, what happened to your gray hair? You noticed, huh? Well, I'd have done it too, but I worried about it looking phony. Does mine look phony? It looks natural. How'd you do it? Clear all option. Clear all option? Clear all option for men. Clear all knows natural looking color, and there's no pouring and mixing. My hair even feels thicker. So how long is it going to take me to look like your twin again? Just five minutes. That easy. Clear all option for men. You were right. You know something? If you're going to do it, do it right. So, I'm having breakfast with my buddies, and I order Kellogg's Bran Flakes. And right away, Scott says, Problem, Dad. Truth is, Kellogg's Bran Flakes taste terrific. It's this nutty, toasted wheat taste, and hey, come on, right, the Kellogg's, right? So, I lean over to Scott, look him right in the eye, and I say, Did you know a spoon can be a deadly weapon? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stay here alone. Oh, double good Kellogg's Bran Flakes. Toasted taste to you. Everybody thinks their family's crazy. Stop it! Stop it! Shut up! Everybody's right. Family Man Doubleheader, Monday and Wednesday. Back at Rosenblatt Stadium, the NCAA, like most Americans, has become quite image conscious. You'll notice that there are no longer billboards on the outfield walls. They've been replaced by thick padding. And the players are no longer allowed to chew smokeless tobacco. Now they go with this big league chewing gum, which is sort of that stringy strawberry stuff. I heard that the tobacco ban was particularly hard on Skip Bertman because he used to smoke cigars in the dugout. Guess Red Auerbach would have a tough time here. Greg? Thank you, Leslie. Well, Leslie's logged some miles around yeah. this stadium today, hasn't she? Got her running in. Left center, the <laughs> third base dugout. I think she's on roller skates. <laughs> Top of the eighth inning. LSU with the seven, eight, and nine hitters in Skip Bertman's batting order. Johnny Telechia, Chris Mook, Andy Sheets to face Darren Dreifert. This one hit towards second. Hall again with the put out. Or the assist for the putout. Now Darren Dreifert's giving him a good effort. Now there's a unique way to warm up. No tension down there. That's Jamie Bluma, just a freshman. And they say he gets it up there about 95. I wore my cap like that once. My coach called me a yo-yo. <laughs> I've since realized it had nothing to do with the way I was wearing my cap. He didn't call you meat, right? So years ago, meat for meathead was the expression for years, or bush. <laughs> well, Chris Mook is on base, having been hit by this pitch. Mirabelli's target down and in, and just as Mook looks like he's going to attempt to punt, that pitch hits him in the top of the shoe. That's three hit batsmen we've seen this afternoon. Gary Emel was hit in the first inning, Armando Rios in the fourth, and now Chris Mook here in the eighth inning. Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium here in Omaha, Nebraska, the site of the College World Series Championship. Greg Gumbel, Jim Cott, Leslie Visser. LSU leading it. Six to two, top of the eighth inning. One on, one out, and this is the number nine hitter in the order, Andy Sheets. You see, what, see what Skip Bertman has in mind. He'd like just one more run with the number nine hitter. Looked like he's going to try to sacrifice even with one out. Whee! Called strike, one and one. Sheets 0 for 2 with a walk. Smoke Laval given the signs down there in the third base box. LSU may have the best names on the coaching lines in the game of baseball. Smoke Laval down at third and over at first. Beetle Bailey. Beetle Bailey. Well, he's an outstanding hitter in the big leagues for many years. Bob Bailey. And his nickname was Beetle. Lined in the left field. Base hit. Mook stops at second. And Gene Stevenson going to take the walk to the mound, and perhaps Darren Dreifert has had it for the day. Yeah, you hate to bring your closer in if you're Gene Stevenson without a lead, but with just two at-bats to go, he's in that situation where he'll bring Bluma in a game like you would bring a pitcher in in a save situation. Try to keep it at 6-2. With hat on correctly, Jamie Bluma enters. We'll be back. 
Today, a woman needs a life insurance plan of her own. State Farm sells life insurance from an agent who's there for you today and there tomorrow, too. You see, we start you outright with a plan specifically designed for a woman's needs, one that protects the people who count on you for so very much. And a State Farm agent will be there tomorrow, too, as your life changes, to keep that plan working for the people you love. State Farm sells life insurance. what you want in a shave. Now, you've got the edge with six rich lubricants. For less irritation, you've got the edge. an easier way to fix your car. Get a Civic four-door from Honda. The streets of Motown ignite with Grand Prix Thunder. Live from Motor City, the Valvoline Detroit Grand Prix next Sunday on CBS Sports. Pitching change here in the top of the eighth inning for Wichita State. Jamie Bluma comes on, and he can wing it. Yeah, good strikeouts. He's about uh, 37 innings, 51 strikeouts in just 16 walks, so he's got good control. And uh, Gene Stevenson has had some good closers. He had Jim Newlin a couple of years ago that had that hard slider, and this kid has a good live fastball and a slider. It's his third appearance here in the College World Series. He has one save, a 1 0 record, and an earned run average of zero. Chris Mook at second. Andy Sheets at first. Here's Tukey Johnson. And a 90 mile an hour burner right off the bat. Yeah, and what they'll do, Wichita State in the field with Bluma throwing and Tukey Johnson at the plate, you'll see they bring the outfield in and over toward the right field line. You you could expect to see Johnson just try to fight the ball off and hit it the other way. Back up the middle. Bluma to second for one. To first, double play. That's a relief job. 1-6-3 if you're scoring. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Wichita State looking for some runs. Things people come up with to talk you out of a Michelin tire. It's just as good as a Michelin. It lasts as long as a Michelin. You'll trust it like a Michelin. Well, they can try anything they want. Because once you've owned a Michelin tire, there's nothing anyone can do to talk you out of one. It's what more men reach for to prepare, to prevent, to protect. Speed Stick, 110% protection. No better way to face the day. No better way to face the day. Speed Stick, 110% protection. Obviously, winning it in 87 is probably my most uh, memorable and funnest moment I've had in sports. Um, I can't see it being any better unless I would win a World Series here in the Major Leagues. Uh, you know, any personal achievement can't come up to winning something as a team and going as far as you possibly can in whatever, whatever uh, division you're playing in. We've heard so many former college World Series champions talk about the moment when it's all over and you're king of the hill. Yeah, that's nice to hear because he's right. No matter what you do as an individual, nothing tops being part of a championship team, especially something that takes about four months to achieve. How about a hole in one? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike. Tommy Tilma, the number nine hitter for Gene Stevenson. Then to the top of the order, Billy Hall and Chris Wimmer. 
The bullpen is busy for LSU. The left-hander is Mark LaRosa. The right-hander is Rick Green. And with the power of this order coming up, perhaps Skip Burtman will go to a first sign of trouble. And Chad Oje falls behind three and one. Pitch, three and two. Here's where if the catcher is still, he's looking in for the sign, but you just kind of look out like a lot of veteran catchers used to do and just say, come on, just throw it, just throw it over the plate. We'll take our chances with six outs to go. Get into left center field. Cordani from left, Rios from center, and nobody gets it. It's out of here. His sixth home run of the year, his first in the College World Series. And that's not what Chad Oje wanted to see from the number nine hitter in the order. A couple of unlikely home run hitters, Armando Rios from LSU, and now, yeah, Oje makes him hit it until he says, I will. Well, at least he made him earn it, didn't walk it. And again, you get a ball airborne to left center field with anything on it, that's where it's going. The ball is really drifting out that way. Look out, Leslie. Billy Hall. Fakes the bunt, takes ball one. Only the fourth hit off of OJ. That's ball two. Hall and Wimmer with three of the four hits. They are three for six against OJ today. The rest of the order, hitters three, two, nine, are one for 17. And that one was the shot by Tommy Tillman. The LSU lead now is 6 to 3. about it in the Wichita State dugout. I'd say another Wichita State base runner and Chad Oje may be finished for the day, Jim. 3-0. Yeah, this is the guy that Skip wants on the mound. He, he showed us that when he allowed him to pitch to Dreyfert with a couple of men on. And he's running that pitch count out right now, maybe losing a little of his control as well as his stuff. But he's got capable guys down in the bullpen. So. Another base runner would seem like uh, might bring Skip out of the dugout. Tommy Tilma homered to lead off the bottom of the eighth for Wichita State. Top of the order now, Billy Hall, 3-0 pitch. 3-1. Skip Berkman. Mm -hmm. well, O'Shea with just one complete game. That's been about his max. Seven innings, seven and a fraction, and he's made the signal. What he has done for LSU this afternoon is he has given the Tigers a chance to win. Every time. Well, Rick Green handed the ball from starter Chad Oje in some very special words. And what a job Oje did this afternoon, Jim.
He goes seven innings on a yield of three runs and four hits, surrendered a homer and a base on balls here in the eighth inning. And Rick Green, a 6'5", 200-pound sophomore from Miami, Florida, has come on. Chris Wimmer. Runner goes. Hall is in there. Third stolen base of the afternoon for Billy Hall. Hey, LSU with a, with a long ball and some two spots, but Wichita State just gets them back one at a time. And they're down three. Billy Hall again in that straight steal situation. Good jump. Very little chance for E. Mel to throw him out. Some people might say, well, you got to be crazy this late in the game, down three, and you got to run around. That's keeping the pressure up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, not, not anymore in baseball. That's one of the big changes. Speed, much more speed in the game, and coaches want to get that runner into scoring position as much as they can. And you cannot turn your back on him now. He stole third in the first inning. Chopped up the first baseline. Foul. Green comes at you with a big sidearm delivery. You mentioned the job Chad Auger did, and the key phrase you struck was he gave his team a chance to win the game. You hear big league managers say that about starters. We're not necessarily looking for a, for a shutout every time because it's a good hitting ball club, Wichita State. But just give me enough innings and enough of a performance to give us a chance to win, and that's what Auger did. Line to short, picked off by Andy Sheets. And an alert Billy Hall backtracks to second. When you see balls hit like this and they're right at people, you get the feeling that it is LSU's day. That's a great at bat right there by Chris Wimmer. He stung the ball. And Andy Sheets right there to make the play. Sheets looking for the double up at second, even on his way down. First out of the inning. Here's Audley. And you've got to figure the middle of this Wichita State order is about due to break loose. You look at that average and you know you're not going to keep him down for long. Toward right field, picked off by Telechia. He'll make the play himself and Hall moves over to third. You mentioned the fielding prowess of Johnny Telechia earlier. Yeah, those don't look like spectacular plays, but what they are is good, steady, solid fielding plays under pressure playing for a national championship. This ball was stung pretty well. See Telechia body on balance, makes the quick reaction, gets the out. is one of LSU's starters, Paul Bird. He's pitched here before and a top draft pick with a good curveball. Berkman getting him ready. Woo! Strike call to Mirabelli. Billy Hall trying to uh, shake up Rick Green was halfway down the third baseline. Gene Stevenson would dearly love because going into the bottom of the ninth needing two, not an impossibility. Oh. A one pitch is high and it's a ball on a strike. The Shockers have not produced well with runners in scoring position. And the biggest at bat of those was when OJ got Dreifert to end the sixth inning with two men on. A ball and a strike to Mirabelli, who is 0 for 2. Inside, 2 and 1. There's Chad OJ. Great, great job for LSU this afternoon. hitter is Todd Dreifer. Had a little chat with himself outside that batter's box. He knows what's at stake. 3-1 count. He's going to get a fastball and a big swing can get his team within one. Here's the 3-1 to Mirabelli. 
Down toward third, knocked down by Mook, picks it up, throws, got him! Outstanding play by Chris Mook to retire the side. The run doesn't score. Now, sometimes your fielding can make you look like a little better pitcher than what you've pitched. I mean, Wichita State hit the ball hard this inning. Nice play there by Mook, gives up his body and makes the good off-balance throw accurately to Telechia to get the third out. That quarterback's arm comes up big for Chris Mook. The Shockers get one on the home run by Tommy Tilma, but trail 6-3 after eight. Rosenblatt Stadium where LSU is still in the lead. You know, the players from LSU think they're sort of the Duke of college baseball. They've been to the College World Series five of the last six years, never won a title. But like Duke, they feel that this year it's their time to take the trophy home. And that's exactly what they're planning on doing to celebrate down in Louisiana. Greg, you're from Louisiana. You know about that. I know all about that, Leslie. Not only from Louisiana, he's Louisiana Lightning. That's right. Of course, very few people know that. LSU three outs away from a championship. A little delay in the action right now because for the first time the sun has popped through and all the Wichita State players hustling toward that dugout to get the, uh, the sunglasses. Jim Audley just coming across the third baseline over to the dugout. <laughs> Got a force to answer the big question, what the heck is that? <laughs> that bright light. <laughs> so Audley has them and so now to shortstop Chris Wimmer and third baseman Mike Jones. And for playing in the field, this, this has been the ideal day for fielders because there has been no glare. And the ball, the, you pick the ball up much easier on a day like today than when the bright sun comes out. But now the boys will put on the, uh, the eyewear. Definition of a true yeah. fan. Fashionable hairdo. Got his moss trimmed up there with the LSU initials. Top of the ninth inning. It'll be the two, three, and four hitters for the Tigers. Armando Rios, Lyle Mouton, Rich Cordani. And what a day this young man, Armando Rios, has had. Hey! He walked and scored in the first, hit a two-run homer in the second, hit by a pitch and scored in the fourth, and doubled in the sixth. Ball and a strike. Jamie Bluma working his second inning. Actually, came on and got Cookie Johnson to hit into a double play to end the eighth. And now has Rios one and two. swinging on the fastball. Bluma's got the kind of approach you like to see in a closing reliever, too. Coaches and managers love to bring a guy in that just takes the ball and says, I'm coming right at you. No dawdling around the mound by Bluma. I mean, he gets it up there quick and works quickly. One up, one gone, and here's Mouton. This will be power against power, huh? Woo! Mouton, two ground outs, a fielder's choice, and a walk. That's strike two. Got a little unusual motion. Mouton shaking his head. That ball's probably tough to pick up. Bluma kind of steps toward first. Lyle got around on that one and pulled it foul down the third baseline. Still on two. A lot of hitters will say that. I can't pick up the ball. It's coming out of his uniform. And that's what it looks like with Bluma. He'll stride a little toward first, and it's almost like he shot puts the ball out of there, out of his right shoulder area. Time called by home plate umpire Lee Hagler. Here's the 0-2. And he waves at strike three. Here's that motion you talked about, Jim. Yeah, the shoulder stays closed, but the foot goes slightly toward first base. Good leg drive right there. Then 
I think seeing him for the first time and seeing the ball come out of that motion right there makes it doubly difficult to pick it up. Here's Rich Cordani. Big two out, two run triple back in the fourth inning. Tapped in front of the plate. That's a fair ball. Mirabelli up throwing, and that'll do it for LSU. Here in the top of the ninth inning, the Tigers will go out needing three outs to become champions. In and we'll send you out to Pat and the rest of the crew when we wrap things up here in Omaha. LSU with a three-run lead as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Eight chosen, talented teams began the action last Friday here in Omaha. And it has come down to LSU and Wichita State. Todd Dreifert will lead it off here in the ninth against Rick Green outside ball one. Two years ago, Wichita State as the number four seed won this championship. Last year, fourth seeded Georgia, a winner. Fourth seeded LSU, just three outs away this year. be out of play and it's a ball and two strikes green like Bluma, not wasting any time and a power pitcher coming right at the hitter exactly what you want to see from your short reliever that one in the right field base hit hit of the game for Todd Dreifert, fifth for Wichita State, and here's Mike Jones, who is hitless today in two trips with a walk. Now you're moving down toward the bottom of the order, but Jason White in the number eight spot has 13 home runs. He's tied for the club lead, so they got some power down there. Congratulations once again to the folks here in Omaha for putting on just another fabulous College World Series tournament. Great 10-day uh, event to come here and watch the stars of tomorrow. Three. Ball strike two. It's an antsy LSU dugout. And an apprehensive Wichita State lineup. Three. Strike three, Paul. First strikeout of the day for Rick Green. Hey, you're right about Ansi. You know, as a player, where you'd rather be right now is out on the field, maybe in Rick Green's shoes or one of the players. The worst spot to be when you're anticipating a national championship, you see Green stick that pitch right on the outside corner, is in the dugout where you can't do anything but do a little cheering. You'd rather be out there playing. Hey. Darren Dreifer takes strike one, removed as a pitcher. Back in the eighth inning, but remains as the designated hitter. Oh, one pitch. Strike two. I want to remind you the coordinating producer of the NCAA championships on CBS is Mark Wolf. Today's College World Series championship game produced by Bob Dikas, directed by Mike Arnold. The senior producer of CBS Sports is Ed Gorin, and the executive producer is Ted Shaker. 0-2 on Dreifer. Looked a lot like the strikeout pitch to Mike Jones, the hitter before. Just missed, though. It's one and two. Oh, 
Reifert late on the swing, fouls it up the first baseline, and it's a ball and two strikes. Pitch right there really points out how important it is to get ahead of hitters, and Tyler Green could not do that today. That's why LSU is leading, but Dreifer just has to take a defensive swing with two strikes, trying to protect the plate. Strike three, Paul! And now the Tigers are one out away. Jason White. Toward third. Moot across the diamond. The Tigers are national champions. He turns into jubilation. Yeah, that's what you play for. You start in February and hope you get here and do what they did. The LSU Tigers have won it. Six to three. We'll take a timeout and come back in a moment. WWL the New Orleans. get the best charcoal, Kingsford, with just the right amount of lighter fluid. Match light from Kingsford. Speed, agility, power. Hit way back to deep left center field. These abilities come from hard work and practice. You can't get them by using drugs. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. Tonight on CBS, a CBS special movie, Laker Girls, a motion picture for TV about three young women whose lives change when they become part of that famous dance squad that performs at home games for the L.A. Lakers. The movie is a rebroadcast. Gene Simmons makes a special appearance, and the Laker girls are featured as themselves. Tina Yothers also stars. That's followed by Dr. Doctor and Good Sports. Speaking of uh, good sports, I'd say this man qualifies. The winning coach in today's championship game, Skip Berkman, is with Leslie Visser. Leslie? That's absolutely correct, Greg. Coach, you were the dominant team of the tournament. You won your games by an average 12 runs. What was the difference today? Well, today, uh, OJ competed very well, and uh, he didn't have his best stuff, and of course, Rick Green closed out with some really demonstrative stuff. We, were, we got hot at the right time. Wichita State's a great team. We're excited for the people of Louisiana and our administration and all the people that stuck with us. It's been a great victory, and it's been a great year. Well, the words undefeated national champions certainly have a great ring to them. Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations, you. Coach. Back to you, Greg. Congratulations indeed from all of us to Coach Skip Berkman and the LSU Tigers. Want to remind you, live third-round coverage of the Buick Open is coming up next year on CBS Sports from Rye, New York. CBS Sports coverage of today's College World Series championship game has been sponsored by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Kellogg's, the best to you each morning. And by Crest, the dentist's choice for fighting cavities. Crest with Floristat. Congratulations to the Tigers. For Jim Cott and Leslie Visser, I'm Greg Gumbel saying so long from Omaha, where the final score is LSU 6 and Wichita State 3. The College World Series has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Championships. 
uh, the uh, ability to participate and belong to something. I think the belonging piece is uh, very, very critical to young people. Uh, I really uh, despair and feel sorry for young people in high school and, and later in college that haven't had the chance to participate in competitive athletics because that sense of belonging is nurturing and I think it goes a long way to developing your personality and, and your strengths for the future. Life is competition. I mean, you can compete on the sports floor, you can compete in the business world, you compete for a successful career. The learner, the sooner you learn to compete, and hone the edge of competition, and I'm talking here legitimate competition, you're going to progress your career a lot sooner and a lot faster. So it shouldn't be a surprise that people that have participated in var varsity athletics tend to, to rise a little bit like the cream in a bottle. This message furnished by the NCAA. This is for Birdie 3. WWL-TV Channel 4. This is an Eyewitness News special report. Good afternoon, I'm Jim Henderson. We briefly interrupt our coverage of the Buick Classic to return you to Omaha, Nebraska. That's where Mike Haas is standing by with members of the College World Series champion, LSU Tigers, who today defeated Wichita State 6-3. Here's Mike. Thank you very much, Jim. Yes, as you say, the Tigers capture their first ever NC2A championship, beating Wichita State 6-3, 8-5. As you can see, the winning Tigers right now are getting introduced. They are accepting their first place title, the first ever, for an LSU baseball team. It was the underdogs today. It was not Lyle Mouton and Gary Hemel that did the damage for the Tigers. It was guys like Pat Garrity from Chalmette and guys like Armando Rios. Rios came into the contest today batting point zero seventy seven but it was his two run home run in the second inning that put the Tigers on top four to one a lead they would not relinquish Chad OJ was simply marvelous eight innings he only gave up three hits before relinquishing the mound to Rick Green in the ninth inning Rick Green came in to get the final out a ground out to Chris Mook to end it as the Tigers bring home the national championship six to three over Wichita State. We will have a lot more live coverage for you coming up at 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock as we remain in Omaha as the Tigers are national champs. But now we'll go back to New Orleans and Jim Henderson. Thank you, Mike. And we'll have much more, as Mike says, from Omaha coming up on our regularly scheduled newscast at 5, 6, and 10. And we now return you to our regularly scheduled program. This has been a special report from Channel 4's Eyewitness News. From above, let's go to 11. News. Toward third, Moose across the diamond. The Tigers are national champions. Champions of college baseball. That's what the LSU Tigers are tonight as the team comes home after a big win in the College World Series. Good evening, this is the five o'clock news for Saturday, June 8th. There was plenty of good hitting, pitching, and defense as the Tigers played in Omaha today. And joining us with more on the latest and the biggest game of the LSU Tigers, uh, I'm sure their career. Oh yes. Now, a great win for the Tigers, and as you said, they had it all today. In fact, they had it all throughout the series. The LSU Tigers are champions of the College World Series. The Tigers topped Wichita State this afternoon in Omaha 6-3 to for the school's first baseball national championship. Our Mike Haas was there all week to see the Tigers make history, and he joins us now live from Omaha. Mike. Thank you very much, Jim. Rather quiet here at Rosenblatt Stadium, but you can believe there is a party going on somewhere, and the LSU Tigers are there. There are 271 Division I baseball teams. Right now, the LSU Tigers are the best. 6-3 winners over Wichita State. We've told you about the bats of Lyle Mouton and Gary Hemel. They got the Tigers to this championship game. But today, there were some unlikely heroes, like the bat of Armando Rios. His home run in the second inning. The youngster was batting point zero seventy seven after three games in the CWS. His two run shot gave LSU a four to one comfortable lead. They would lead six to one before the final out. A one hopper to Chris Mook, the fastball to John Telechia, and the celebration, the celebration that the Tigers had waited so long for was on. 
They waited past the regional. They waited past the first three games of this tournament, but finally they got to celebrate as LSU is the national champ. It was unbelievable. Uh, you know, better than anything I can ever remember, and uh, you know, I don't know if I'd ever be able to get that high again. It was uh, just the, uh, the feeling of accomplishment and uh, you know, knowing that we had finally uh, accomplished our goal that we had been shooting for for four years. It's been a long wait. We've been here three years in a row. And it's amazing how each year in the past we peaked a little too early. We peaked right before the regionals and we struggled to get through the regional. But this year it's, we put it all together at one time and that's what you're supposed to do and that's how you win the national championship. And I guess it was just our year this year and we just worked very hard for it and I believe we deserve it. Chad Ogier, who was near flawless this afternoon for the second straight year, an SEC team brings home the national title. We aren't going anywhere. We'll have another live report and more on the LSU Tigers and their national championship season coming up in sports. For now, back to you, Jim. Thanks very much, Mike. Gary Hemel, by the way, the MVP of the College World Series. As Mike said, a lot more coming up in sports. All right. Thanks a lot, Jim. Hundreds of people bid farewell to the old state capitol building in Baton Rouge today. The building is closing and will not reopen until 1993. For the message about this kind of protest. in Baton Rouge. In fact, they'll be there at Alex Fox Stadium at 11.15 tomorrow for the homecoming and the pep rally, and it should be quite a scene. The LSU Tigers are college baseball's national champions. The Tigers jumped on Wichita State early and never let up in winning today's championship game 6-3. to three. In the top of the first, LSU got its first run off a shaky Tyler Green with Rich Cordani bringing home Armando Rios with this sacrifice fly, and they would each have big days, Cordani and Rios. Pat Garrity got the second run of the frame home with this single. It'll score Lyle Mouton, and it's 2-0 Tigers early. A bang-bang play at the plate, but the ball is dropped by the catcher. It was 2-1 in the second when Rios served up a surprising two-run homer to left center. This might have been the biggest blow of the game. Rios had hit just three dingers the entire season. That made it 4-1. In the fourth, Cardani delivers again. He'll rip this triple off the right field wall. Rios scores. Mouton scores. The Tigers have opened up a 6-1 lead after three and a half. And then Cordani provided the glove work to help protect that lead. He and Rios make a sandwich against the wall. But Cordani comes away with the drive that'll score a run on the sacrifice fly, make it 6-2. In the sixth, Cordani again, the converted third baseman, a diving grab of Billy Hall's little liner. Tigers continue to lead by four. 6-3 with Rick Green on in relief of Chad Oje in the ninth. Two outs, Chris Mook guns down the final batter of the game. And the LSU Tigers pile onto the field and pile onto each other as the 1991 national champions of college baseball winning today 6-3. to three. And we now go to Omaha, where Mike Haas is standing by live. Mike. Jim, the Tigers had been to the CWS three straight years, but this year they were hot, the entire team, top to bottom. And because they had failed in their previous two appearances, it made today's win that much sweeter. Oh, man, so, so much more. I mean, this is this, this I can look, all the seniors can look back, and even the juniors that are going to leave because of the draft can look back at the last college game as something they worked really four, three, and four years for, because we didn't, we haven't won it before. And, and it all paid off on one day, one glorious day. Today we had quality pitching, timely hitting, and great defense. And it couldn't have happened on a better day than the national championship day. And that's why we are national champions. How about Armando, batting 077 into today, and that two-run home run had to really lift you guys. That was a real key, because um, it was, um, they struggled with a uh, pitching zone and they kind of argued a pitch, and uh, it really hurt them because the next pitch was the home run. And um, it uh, feels good, and I'm glad for Armando because he struggled and uh, really come out, and he, he did well today, and he was a key point to uh, in, in us winning the day. Gary Hemel was named the most valuable player. He had four home runs, which did tie a CWS record. I'm sure he just edged out Lyle Mouton. As you said, Jim, the Tigers will not leave for Baton Rouge until tomorrow morning, which means... There'll be a pretty good-sized party going on here in Omaha. In fact, the Tigers are planning one at 6 o'clock back in their hotel. I'm sure an early leave tomorrow will leave the Tigers with a few heavy heads, let's say, but heading back to Baton Rouge as the 1991 national champs. We'll be back at 6 o'clock with another live report as the Tigers are the 1991 College World Series champs. I'm Mike Koss in Omaha. Back to you, Jim. 
Thanks, Mike. Some heavy heads, but heads held high for the Tigers as national champions. In the National League this afternoon, the Mississippi community, which will receive close to one in Nebraska today. The thing I like so much about this team is that it's so well-rounded. They have is. some stars, but I mean, they're they're all good and they're so deep with their pitching that really didn't even get shown in the college world series but they have some great pitchers that really didn't see a whole lot of action so uh, i think a solid performance from top to bottom for the tigers power hitting airtight defense and clutch pitching the lsu tigers got them all throughout the college world series and again today when it mattered most as they became the 1991 national champions of collegiate baseball mike haas is live from omaha mike Thanks, Jim. The Tigers are celebrating tonight in Omaha. Tookie Johnson, Shal Metz, Pat Garrity, and the tournament MVP, Gary Hemel, all seniors, all were very patient. They left Omaha the past two years losers. Tonight, they are part of the 1991 National Championship team, LSU's first ever. A simple grounder to Chris Mook at third base. And the Tigers had grabbed the same national title that had eluded them in four previous years. That's the prettiest sight you've ever seen. We're right in the middle. Outgoing senior, no better way to finish it. <laughs> I tell you what, it's a, it's a dream come true. Uh, somebody asked me a little while ago, what does it mean to win it now uh, after failing two times? And it's like before you just had cake. Now that you got the icing on the cake. This would not be a day for the Bayou Bash brothers, Hemel and Mouton. Rather, an unlikely hero, Armando Rios. Hitting point zero seventy seven after three games, he gave the Tigers a comfortable 4-1 lead with a two-run home run. LSU chased shocker Tyler Green in the fourth. We always were positive, and we said, we're going to do it, just believe in it. And we kept working harder and harder every time, and today we came. And I knew if we were swinging the bat um, pretty, uh, hard, we were going to do it because our pitching was, was strong. And after Green came, uh, went out, I knew it was all good. <coughs> Chad Oje pitched into the eighth, scattering three hits before giving ground to stopper Rick Green. The Tigers never trailed in this one. Whenever um, the team gets me a lead like that, I'm, I'm going to try anything I can to do not to give it up, even if it's just one run. And seeing Tyler Green do that, it was very it was very comfortable to be able to walk out on the mound knowing you got a two run lead. The Shockers put the pressure on late, but LSU would not let anyone steal their celebration. I talked to Pat Garrity after the South Regional in Baton Rouge. He said, hey, the College World Series. All it takes is for one team to get hot for four games, and that is exactly what the Tigers did. This was destiny for most of these players. They had it all this week, pitching, defense, and, of course, the timely hitting. Of course, the home runs by Lyle Mouton and Gary Hemel, so key through the first three games. And because the pitching situation, the way it worked out, Chad Oje, very minimal workouts before Saturday's, today's championship game, where he was near flawless. The Tigers are the 1991 national champs. They will stay in Omaha tonight and party, and then they'll head back to Baton Rouge tomorrow for another welcome home party. As for us at Channel 4, we're about to hit the road to come back to the Crescent City. It's been one heck of an interesting week, but for now, Mike Haas signing off from Omaha. Back to you, Jim. Job well done by Mike Haas and Bob Parkinson and the whole crew are back here coordinating it as well. Gary Hemel was the MVP of the College World Series for his performance, and the Tigers have every right to party tonight, tomorrow, for who knows how long. The Cubs staged a seventh inning rally to dump the Dodgers this afternoon. Chico Walker came through in the pinch for... Good evening. In less than two weeks, school board members will have to decide how to college baseball World Series for the first time in history. At Champions in Metairie, where Saints great Morton Anderson reigns, the fans couldn't have been happier. For the LSU Tigers, this is for y'all. Small toes. You know, I think it's a, a great boost for the area here, for the sports and everything, because I tell you, they, I think they really proved that they have a good program and they hit the ball really well. From my personal standpoint, of course, we're looking for a great year with the Saints, but uh, you got to, right now, you got to be very proud of LSU and what they've accomplished. Jim Henderson will have a complete wrap-up on the Tigers World Series victory in just a few minutes. A crowd estimated in the hundreds... 
a man. Free book season for the LSU Tigers. Jim is next. <laughs> Terrific victory for the Tigers today. It's all over now, but the shouting, and I think the shouting will go on for quite some time. Tiger hearts are swelling with well-deserved pride tonight after LSU took its first national championship in baseball. Our Mike Haas, who was in Omaha from beginning to end, wraps up the package. The Tigers were not intimidated by the drop-off knuckle curve of first-round draft choice Tyler Green. The Tigers scored two in the first, the second of which on Pat Garrity's RBI single. And when Armando Rios connected on a two-run home run, only his fourth of the year, LSU had a lead they would not give up. But he hit it into the, uh, that wind tunnel in left center where Tilma hit his. And uh, that was a great thing, considering there were two outs at the time. So Armando with the home run with two outs. It's just a uh, characteristic of this team is just battle and fight like dogs. Rich Cordani, who went hitless in the CWS last year, came up with the big hit in the fourth. As the Tigers built starting pitcher Chad Oje a six to one cushion. The big guys didn't do it, but you know, the whole lineup did it. And they did it too, also. I mean, Gary hit the ball real hard at people, and that's baseball. It's going to happen. Lyle was on base, he scored twice. And like I said, we had, you know, timely hitting and quality pitching, and that's really the reason why we won. We're hot. And I think that's uh, the most important thing. I uh, also would like to say this is probably the most talented team, most talented bunch of athletes that I've ever coached and uh, been here 10 times. Rick Green had two key strikeouts in the ninth. And then third baseman Chris Mook ignited the final celebration, a party he would miss. Well, I came in from the side and dove in. And I guess somebody else was diving at the same time. And I don't know. I hit somebody's either head or a spike. It was just, I had a cut. And uh, I looked at my hand, I had a handful of blood, so I got out of there and had to come in and get ice, and, and uh, Doc sewed me up, and you know, I missed the whole celebration. So the Tigers finished 91 in perfect fashion, 4-0 and in the regional, 4-0 and in the College World Series, and that celebration that they've waited so long for finally took place. It's a dream coming true. Before you just had cake. Now that you have icing on the cake. In Omaha, Mike Hoss, Eyewitness Sports Night Watch. What a great memory that scar will provide Chris Mook, a memory of the Tigers' 6-3 to three win over the Shockers and the national championship in collegiate baseball. The New Orleans Knight made its way over to the...